Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Hospitality Marketing, live show number 271. With me is the esteemed, the one and only, the totally capable in the world of MetaSearch, the man that, well, actually, no, you're not Dean from Basecamp Meta or MetaSearch Marketing. You are Dean from Scout Troop. What is it again? This week, I am Dean from Boy Scout Troop 122. <laughs> <laughs> Buy popcorn. <laughs> Buy popcorn. We're going to be sharing a link today to help Dean and his his son sell more popcorn than anybody else in the entire universe. No, for Boy Scouts. <laughs> Mr. Stuart Butler, sir, Phil Travel, how are you this I heard someone was selling food, so I figured I'd join. <laughs> Excellent choice. <laughs> yeah. Dean, Dean is uh, Mr. Popcorn. He is from uh, from the Boy Scout troop. Oh man, you know I'm not going to remember this stuff all day long. Boy but Scout anyway, one twenty two. Hey, you, you just finally got my MetaSearch marketing and Basecamp meta down. We'll get. I'll, I'll cut you some slack. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it takes me only what, Stuart? How long did I stop calling you Bob? Six months? It, it took a while, <laughs> and I still occasionally get called Scott for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Just everyone smells something. A shout out to Mr. Robert Cole, who is not joining us today, but as he does get us the list, it just down to the wire. <laughs> I'll be honest, I did not read them today. So we'll be we'll be fine. I have not I have not looked at this list. I was gonna peek at it. I had a couple of show and tell things I definitely wanted to bring into the conversation because I'm kind of in the middle of the dialogue about it. And I would definitely appreciate any advice or insights or whether you think it's poo-poo or not. Um, but besides from that, uh, let's see who else is sitting around. No, no, we got can I go out a on a limb and make a pred prediction what your idea is going to be. Yeah, what what what, is, what do you think my idea is going to be? I think it's going to be super fringy, really brilliant, but only Lauren could execute it. And yeah, <laughs> no, you know what? I think I think this might be a little bit more mainstream, slightly okay. closer to center. It, okay, um, and, and that is um, uh, CCTV, uh, CTV. Excuse me. And the use of uh, more affordably than they have been in times past, where you, for me, being a cord cutter at home, TV wise, mm -hmm. you know, ATT TV now, uh, Sling, uh, all this stuff. Oh my God, look at the man yeah. with the beard, Griffin. He's hey, patient zero. <laughs> you are, you look like a mountain man, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I call out a wife. Griffin, do you know Dean? I'm sorry. Since all this time has gone on, I don't know whether you know Dean Schmidt. I think Hi. I think we've been on together before, but I think it was like a bigger group, so I didn't really get to uh, really meet. But uh, pleasure. Okay. Well, good. And thank no you problem. for popping in. You did warn us that you were going to have a, a slightly uh, a rustic look to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I, yeah, I was saying, you know, you, you add in Colorado and 2020 together, and uh, this is kind of the product. So. Uh, <laughs> the reason I say I'm out, I get Burning Man or something. <laughs> The reason I shaved my beard, I just I just couldn't compete. So. Oh man, I was liking the beard. That's, that's right, you had that going for a bit. Had to go, man. <laughs> Should be working well, right, right, right in the chat room. It was an error. I, I had the Bitly issue today. That Bitly was down or something was really weird, but that Bitly wasn't working. Huh. Uh, and it was weird because people were emailing problem? me this morning saying it didn't work. Was it a picnic problem, Lauren? Problem in chair, not in computer. It was user error. Uh, yeah, I think it was between the keyboard and the floor. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I was bringing up the fact that with the new uh, online channels like on AT&T Now, Slingbox, um, uh, some of the other ones that are out there, uh, Hulu, obviously, and then you look at some of these other channels that are getting, you have a lot more ad space. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can be very geo-targeted to these things now. Mm -hmm. And there are platforms now that you can as they're beta rolling right now that you can get into it. And you can be very targeted demographically by show type, obviously, and time of day, and also ge uh, you know the geography and so forth. And and so I'm, I'm trying to develop a program. Some places are still really pricey, like they're wanting 13, 15, 18,000 to get in, mm -hmm. um, but they're giving you prime slots. And uh, high frequency usage, and it's you know for thirteen thousand, if you're getting a potential seven or eight to one, okay, you know maybe yeah. that ain't a bad world. Uh, but anyway, I just what, would love to your thoughts as to whether that's crazy talk right now. We should let it settle down to something different, or what? 
Well, I stand corrected, Lauren. It's not a crazy idea for once. <gasps> <laughs> I impressed Stuart? Holy shit. <laughs> now, I, think, I think we've all got to adjust, right? I mean, I, I don't think many individual properties have really been on, you know, in the TV advertising for a while. I, I think it's it's something that's kind of decreased in value, increased in price over the years. Um, and I, ha I have an inside kind of knowledge of that industry. I don't know if everyone knows this or not, but but Fuel's sister company, who I manage as well, is it runs cable advertising for a local Ooh. telephone co-op. So Ooh. it's been really interesting. We, When I started with the company almost 20 years ago, the, the owners at that point were saying, you know, I don't think we got many more years left of running TV ads. I think it's a dying industry and this internet thing's going to sure replace it. And, you know, five years after that, they said the same. And, and five years after that, they said the same. And 2019 was the most revenue we've ever gotten from TV advertising. 2020 is going to beat 2019. So it, it's not something that's gone away, but I would say that viewership has decreased, right? So where have people gone? Where is media consumption? Obviously it's digital TV. It's, and the beauty of that is twofold. One, to Lauren's point, you can really get targeted. You, you can not just target based on show, but you can target based on individual's interest as well. Whereas regular TV, it's it's kind of a, a spray and pray mentality. You can geo-target, but that's really about it. So with IPTV, I really like the fact you can get a little more granular. But the other thing right now is, if it, yes, there's a barrier to entry. They do, a lot of them have minimum buys, but you can co-op that. It depends on who your agency is. They can place you with multiple, from, you know, multiple clients on a single ad buy. But there's, there's this phenomenon that always happens in advertising. Always, always, always. Every new media channel that comes out, whether that was Facebook, whether it was Google Ads, whether it's now IPTV, there's always some arbitrage that happens. If the price is lower at the beginning, and early adopters benefit from that tremendously. It's something Gary Vaynerchuk talks about all the time. So IPTV targeting is very cheap right now um, and, and very effective. But make sure you're doing it right. Make sure it's the right message and make sure you're, you're testing and make sure you're tracking, most importantly. Yeah, Stuart, I remember you bringing that up uh, in like the early COVID days. You said the TV was like just going bonkers for a lot of your clients. Was that on the cable side or was it on the, like the OTT or IPTV side? No, of that, that was traditional. That was our traditional, traditional okay. TV advertising. Um, you know, the other thing that's going really, really well right now is radio advertising in digital radio advertising, including podcast advertising. That that seems to be going really you well. You know what my theme was today. I was going to bring, damn it, you took away my other thunder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, but yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that. And, but here's my very, my entrance barrier with, with the videography is a lot of hotels are just not built with the, with the, uh, the collateral, the content to do this i mean that's that's the first wall is okay that's great we want to do this but who has a video ad in their pocket you know that's of a caliber quality it's one thing to get away with prosumer level fun stuff on social but if you're going to drop it on tv it's got to have a little bit more polish to it i would think and Stuart, since you're doing this which i did not know until just now thank you um <laughs> you know what level of, of production it has to be required of this that it you don't keep bouncing back what that's not, you know, they kick it back, say that's not good, we're not gonna put that on, or this is an issue. Yeah. I, I haven't seen any any um pushback related to the quality. So I don't think that the 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 channels themselves, the publishers are, are really that monitoring it that closely. But um yeah, I, I think you've got to, you know, it's not YouTube, right? It, it it has to have a slightly different polish. I think a lot of people are used to the quality of YouTube being a little more hammy and you can get away with a little more rough. rough. But but a commercial doesn't have to be, you know, a $50,000 investment. You can, I mean, we produce TV commercials for local um, spots for like, four or five hundred dollars so it's not it's not like it's a massive investment and, and one of the things you can do is leverage other assets you already have and b-roll that, that might exist at, at your dmo level the dmos in your area likely have a lot of b-roll footage of your area that they will give you for free if you're a member so you can leverage b-roll put in some stills you know moving some stills of the of the if you've already got some great photography and just you can get a voiceover done for what 50 bucks so yeah. it doesn't have to be a big production 
right there with you on the DMO space. I think that's something that a lot of hotels don't take full advantage of, those connections that they have that they pay into. And yeah, you can pair that up with some some stock video as well and 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 splice that together to look pretty nice and, and really mm -hmm. take in the locale. Yeah. Uh, obviously mm -hmm. it's a step above YouTube, right? YouTube can be a little yeah. bit campier, but and, yeah. and I'll tell you what too, you can you can get students to to edit video today. Almost every teenager is yeah. These Generation Z, the Zoomers that are going, growing up right now, they, have our job. they are super tech savvy, <laughs> and, and they can really, really edit a video. Like yeah. my 14-year-old my does, does all the editing for my wife's preschool, and, and he's way better at video editing than I am, and he's been doing it for a couple of years now. But you can get local students to, hey, make me a commercial. Here's what I want, and, and it can come out pretty well. So you can do it on the cheap. Sure. So just, just, just to put on that, hospitality digital marketing show does not endorse child labor in any <laughs> shape or form. It's just you know students can be. Yeah. 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 You, can you, can age. you can pay fourteen year olds to do work. I'm glad you brought that up to us because you know Dean got rolled in with the fact that he is representing uh, Boy Scout Troop number. Sure, <laughs> that was in the email. Yeah. Yes, and uh, that, that that's you know the, the amazing yeah. thing with all these fundraisers is they're basically child labor that's been legalized, but uh, <laughs> to some degree, of course, really it's the parents then going into their office and uh, pitching that stuff to all their office mates. But when you don't have an office and you can't go door to door due to COVID, you can't stand in front of a store due to COVID. What do you do? Well, you come on to Lauren's show and say, hey. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> throw link, dude. Let's throw, throw it up there. Let's sell some popcorn, man. <laughs> uh, by the way, this is Battle of the Beards. I've already lost, just so you know. I'm not even putting myself in the contest. Griffin, I don't yeah. know whether you've met Tristan before. Tristan's yeah, over yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Island yeah. in the Atlantic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, you know, now we got a little battle of the beer going, so we're good with that. Nah, see, nah, um, nah, see Griffin, Griffin's has already grown like, you know, three inches since I already started this conversation. So <laughs> I, I'm not even going to compete. <laughs> uh, but, but, but to the point about video, I, it's kind of fun. I went over, I used to do back in 2004 through six, or was it five through seven? I forget. Share video, uh, TV spots and radio spots. And so I jumped all over that and I was doing videos for the hotels, you know, <laughs> with a ca handheld camera and all this other stuff too. And I went back and I'm still in my, my YouTube files for it, these videos that I did. But, you know, again, this goes back to like radio at the time we were buying remnants. When I was trying to, I was going to advertise when the, when the Patriots were first coming to the Super Bowl and there was a huge uh, low following in Florida where there were Patriots fans. I was going to advertise in the Boston video and they're like, oh, uh, prime time is 15,000 or whatever it was. This is back in 2005, you know, blah, 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 32nd. I go on Google, I paid like $200 and was dropping in the same time slots. And it's like, I felt like I was stealing, you know, the, the time slots. But, you know, Google slowly over time, that newspaper ads, I was doing a lot of newspaper ads with the Google stuff too. They were uh, they were buying a lot of uh, news slots and stuff for traditional media. Um, and they since got out of almost all of that now. But they still mess with the radio, I think. I still think that, that you can do some radio with them. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, what's really interesting, I th think a lot of people, we talk about TV ads and my, myself included up until a couple of years ago, if you told me TV, TV ads, I would have been thinking cable or my broadcast TV, ABC, NBC, you know, those types of things. And uh, when, while I was working with Wyndham, actually, I learned a lot about terrestrial and non-terrestrial radio and TV ads and what that all means. And there are a lot of channels out there that you never even thought about. If anybody has a Roku, Go onto your Roku and you get mm -hmm. your usual suspects, your Netflix, your Disney Plus, and all that stuff. But guess what? There's a whole bunch of other channels out there. And a lot of those other channels aren't supported by monthly fees. Instead, they're supported by ads that they drop into your whatever program you're watching. Mm -hmm. and so there, there's a lot of content out there. I was playing Candy Crush the other day, actually, and uh, the little <laughs> thing came up. You want to get a free life? Watch this video. So it was actually a commercial for a local college that inserted a and added a brilliant. I thought it was a little bit yeah. dated, but it was brilliant. Uh, so there are places that well, you're. To be fair, playing play. Candy Crush is kind of dated. This is like <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty Mobile. That's what you should be on, Dean. Call of Duty. Mobile. Oh, okay. I got. I got to get the new yeah. one. Look, I'm on level five thousand something of Candy Crush. Come on. I've got <laughs> it now. I don't even know what that means, but I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> My, my like friend Ken used to say, the young kids today say weird flex, but okay. And that's what <laughs> I, yeah. 
it, it, in all technicalities, we have a Facebook uh, channel that you can get on the Facebook app on your smart TV. You just have to go through an app to get to it, know exactly what you're looking for to find it. So it's not exactly highly productive that we actually have this broadcast on there. But back when it first was made available, I'm like, oh, yeah, let's try it. You know, and it's like, yeah, after 3,000 clicks through, you finally find the show. It's not really productive. <laughs> Hey, so I've got a weird idea. I haven't tried this, but it's something I've been noodling, and, and so I'm being Lauren right now. I'm, I'm throwing out that fringe thing that is probably a little crazy, and no one's really going to do it. But you can submit your own content to Amazon Prime Video. Yeah. You can submit really? your own documentaries sure. and stuff, right? So as a hotel, you could, you could technically shoot anything you wanted, call it a documentary, and publish it on Amazon Prime. Yeah. Well, okay. It reminds me, Stuart. Have you Wait, dropped the podcast over to to uh, um, uh, Amazon Audio? Um, you can you can now have access to edit to Amazon Music now. The podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fancy. I just uh, the beta. Well, not the beta. It's past the beta now. I was on the beta. And now it's and now it's full prime. Where it's uh, you can submit your podcast to the Audible and and get it on uh, Amazon now. There you go. Bezos taking over the world. <laughs> Because <laughs> you can get his I'm show really up. Really here. Yeah. yeah. My George well, Foreman I mean, grill plays this podcast now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but to your point about podcast adding, too, it's like even the platform I use, podcast.co, just added to their functionality the pre or post ad spots that you can create either for yourself or allow somebody else to buy into if you want to monetize it. You know, more and more of the podcast platforms. You know, even SoundCloud is, and and others are asking it of, do you want to drop in ad space, pre, post, or in middle? You can do a you can do a, a mid drop uh, submission for uh, uh, ads if you want to from from that, uh, because it, there there is more and more people. Podcasts are a, a, a more acceptable stream of conversation now for most people. It, it's not a, it, there's no hurdles for it. So that's why Stewart's podcast is so popular because <laughs> it's award winning. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. Every Everybody. George Foreman, if it's on there, it's just got Stuart playing. That's right. <laughs> so uh, in, in other news then, um I've uh, I've heard a whisper on the grapevine um uh, from a very, very reliable source that uh, that Google are opening up meta to organic. It's in beta right now. Oh careful. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's, it's on again. It's off again. It's on again. It's off again. But um, I've, I've actually had the screenshot sent to me. Um, I don't have a great deal of information on it, but I believe that um, Google are going to be uh, uh, opening up the beta, which kind of makes sense because you know, they've been playing around with Meta quite a bit uh, during COVID, offering the commission and the, you know, um, uh, the, the different booking models and opening that up to everybody other than just Marriott. Um, so now opening up an organic, I still don't have enough details on what it's going to look like and how that's going to work and whether organic is going to show above the, you know, like the fold where you've got to click the button and drop it down or whether you've got to drop it down and it's all the way at the bottom, who knows? But it would, I just thought I'd bring that one up for my show and tell and get that in there early because it could be interesting. So I'll, I'll tell you a little, I'll tell you some stories about that actually. So uh, about a month ago, uh, th th this, as you said, this has been an on again, off again thing mm. for them. Actually. So it was about a month ago that I first caught wind of it and saw it in the wild, if you will. And there were two tech vendors in the space that released uh, press releases about it. And I have a contact at Google that I've talked with on and on again, off again, actually about, of course, what Google's doing. And before I saw that release, I had gone to him and said, hey, I, I've heard rumors of this happening. And he was like, yeah, no, 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 no such thing. It's not happening. It's kind of like the first rule of Fight Club. There was no Fight Club. And uh, and so then all of a sudden these press releases came out with images and everything, and I forwarded one to him and I said, "Hey, what's what's this? This is what I was talking about." And he's like, "Oh no, that doesn't exist." And the next day, <laughs> both of those press releases had to be retracted. Well, I shouldn't say retracted; had to be removed from both of those tech vendors that have published them. They're, they don't; they're not there anymore. They got taken down. Uh, since then, if you, uh, particularly in Europe, uh, your neck of the woods there, Tristan, is that you, you've seen it pop up a couple of times uh, mm. now and again. And so I think they're dabbling with it. 
And and certainly an advantage. I think it's really advantageous to smaller hotels. Oh yeah. They don't have a marketing budget PPC. All they've got to do is get connectivity. And by their way, there's ways of doing that. If you're not familiar with that, reach out to me. I'll talk more about that. But they don't have to have a marketing budget. Now, is a Marriott hotel in New York City going to get that organic listing in the top spot? No, <laughs> no chance because that that's paid territory, right? And there's no way Google's going to let that infringe on there. But if you didn't have something in there competing for that PPC, yeah, sure. Why not? That just helps Google. Well, we've seen some really cool results with like um, like rebrands or brand new hotels that are opening up when they've not gone out and put their uh, their inventory on on Booking or Expedia, and literally they're the only one on Meta. Oh like, yeah. So, so the returns it's like it's like shooting fish in a barrel with dynamite. It's just ridiculous yeah. the returns. You've got no competition <laughs> in an auction. All right, I'm gonna bid. I'm, I'm gonna bid a dollar, but I ain't gonna pay it because there's no one else bidding against me. It's, it's amazing. Imagine then if if you're doing that, you now won't even need to pay for it because you've essentially you could just go for the organic stuff. You know, mm -hmm. if if there's nobody else in the auction, it's absolutely fantastic. So it's it's an opportunity for like say for rebrands um, and and new hotels being built. And I imagine given the current mm -hmm. climate, there's going to be a lot of hotels changing names, changing hands, doing all kinds of weird and wonderful deals. You know, uh, mm -hmm. as, as as we move into 2021, things are not going to stay the same. We're already seeing it. So it could be an interesting opportunity. Yeah. Well, and where I see that going is that, so you start off as that small property, right? Rebrand, a small bed and breakfast, whatever it may be. And mm -hmm. great, so you can get in there on an organic listing. But the problem is nobody's seeing you, right? Because you're still that small little property. And when I search for hotels in Texas, in Dallas, uh, you've got no chance. You've got zero chance of coming up on that, right? Unless you start getting into one of their uh, Google's promoted properties programs. And now all of a sudden what you're doing is you're paying for non-branded search terms to get up on that market ranking. And so you, you've got to list, because if you didn't have a listing there, if you didn't have a link for booking, there was no point in you paying for that. But now you at least have a link for booking. Now Google can go back to you and say, hey, how about getting some more visibility here in that market ranking? And so I think that one contributes to the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we've got to be a little cautious, right, because it's being tested now, and, and ultimately right. Google's not going to do anything that makes them less money in, in, at the end of the day, right? right. So, so we're going to pay for it one way or, or the other. It, some folks are speculating that maybe th this quote-unquote organic listing is still going to be commissionable, so uh, th they're going to somehow get sure. their revenue. What I think is happening and, and, and it makes sense. You know, COVID, a lot of people are calling COVID an accelerator for a lot of things that were inevitably going to happen, but it's just sped it up. Right now, the OTAs are on their knees. They have no deep pockets right now. They can't spend their way out of this. Like they like they built themselves in 2001 and then 2008, right? They really built themselves by advertising the heck out of their brands and stealing share away from direct booking by bidding on brands and doing all this unscrupulous stuff. They're not going to be able to do that as aggressively this time. So Google sees this as, wait, our end game has always been to disintermediate the OTAs. It's always been what we've wanted to do. If we can get as many properties as we can on a commission basis and then just highlight them, show them, all our revenue is going to start coming directly from hotels. We're going to squeeze out the OTAs a lot faster than it would have been before because the OTAs aren't spending nearly as much as they were on mm -hmm. Google today as they were a year ago. So yeah, I, I think we're going to have, we're going to be trading one master for another, unfortunately. And, and it's OTAs. Not possibly. To I think, yeah, they, you know, like I, I agree that, you know, Google, are, that, you know, the, the much, much higher level that the, they're looking to do that. That's, that's, you know, different, different, plane of reality web you know those those types of decisions are being made as to what are we going to do against booking.com and google got the power to do something about it i think bringing it down a, a couple of levels um i know google have always had problems actually getting hotels on meta because the barrier to entry to meta has always been the tech fees the cost to actually hook your inventory your ari up into google hotel ads Yep. Hence the reason why they did the integration with Google Ads in, in, you know, in the first place. It took so long and all kinds of problems, but then they eventually got there. They still haven't rectified that issue of how do I get the information out of the PMS, a CRS, or anywhere else and get that into Google. Yeah, I've so them, yeah, I know, I know, I know you've got a solution, <laughs> but, but Google itself doesn't. And I think if uh, if they've tried different things because there's there's certain programs that may or may not existed that I may have 
bid signed an NDA about about an alpha but I can't talk about that may have tried to solve those solutions but um obviously I never said that uh, but even they've been kiboshed I've just got I've just been I got you know notification this week that's been kiboshed that 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 route that they were looking to go down there to try and get people direct has been kiboshed whether it I don't know the reason for it or whatever so they've still got a fundamental issue of, of getting hotels from you know the data from where they need to and getting them onto um uh, onto message and i think o organic would make sense because it it reduces the burden of financial pressure you know if you're only paying for a tech fee and then you can list organically at least then you're not paying for a tech fee and your ppc spend on top of it you know your medicine mm -hmm. spend you know it may it, it may well be sure you're 100 right they're just in a power grab here and i'm talking out my ass but you know what be the first time there's, there's no way they'll do it for free in the long no. term. No, it, you're right. You're right. They won't. And it may well be that it, this is the way to get them all up in there, grab market share, and then slowly keep turning the turning the uh, the, the CPCs yeah. up every Google every is year. the biggest threat to this industry, but I don't think people realize it. Some of them I talked about at Navigate right before the COVID pandemic hit, and then that was what everyone's focused on. But once we're through this pandemic, Google is going to come out much, much stronger than they were in 2019. Mm -hmm. We're all going to wake up one day and be like, oh, crap. I went from having a, a duopoly to, to a monopoly in terms of who's, or I guess a monopsony to a, I get, a duopsony. I don't, I don't even know if that's a word. <laughs> you just make, just make words about that, yeah. No, a monopsony is when they're like, like they control the, the supply, right? Is so, that a South African word or a... <laughs> the more you know star is coming over my head right now <laughs> regardless we're going to trade two massive otas for one massive google and, and i feel yeah. welcome our google overlords um, if they're listening <laughs> the, the, to difference, us. <laughs> the difference there though is that the otas are all about booking through the otas they don't give a crap about your brand they're they care about the ota google at the very least you know don't no misunderstanding google cares about google but google okay. at least is going to drive tr traffic to your website as opposed to going somewhere else but they might charge you a little more for it who knows they might yeah, Eventually. yeah. once they have complete control yeah they, they're going to control the pricing and we're all going to be beholden to their whim sure mm -hmm. there's a godfather court coming out at some point about that as well <laughs> <laughs> You come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but look, I mean, Google has to find new ways to capture new business, right? Because they've already got all the the Marriotts, the Hiltons, the Wyndhams, they all the big brands that you know they're they're locking stuff and they got programs they're running. So uh, yeah, of course you want to grow that business, but with COVID, you're certainly not growing that. Uh, if anything is going the other direction, so where do you find new business from? Well. You've got to figure out how to work with these small players out there uh, down to that 10 room bed and breakfast. And uh, Lauren, you well, actually everybody on this call. We've talked about uh, how I'm very passionate about getting those connected into Google Meta. And, and there are challenges to it. Connectivity, the technology being one of it, but the, the marketing budget being in the campaign optimization being the other part of it. So if they can eliminate that part of the equation, now you can just put that money somewhere else. And believe me, Google will give you other places to spend it. Oh, with, with high tech virtual coming up, and I know Stuart, you're already participating into that. Uh, mm -hmm. Griffin, are you guys going that way? Or are you you staying out of high tech this year? What are you What are you guys planning on doing? Uh, yeah, we'll probably we'll probably attend, but I mean, no kind of involvement or anything. Okay, okay, yeah, because because it brings up a fundamental question: what you're talking about, Dean, what we're talking about in general, the technology landscape. What COVID has done, as you said, is an accelerant to a process that probably would have taken a span of years for us to realize we have to make these changes. And now it's a matter of months that, that we're having to realize to make these changes. And a lot of companies are going out of business, one, just from an operational expense they can't maintain. And from the second side of things, um, they're not investing in technology, but that literally is the turning of the coin right now, where these hotels have to evolve their technology presence or technology connectivity to fundamentally continue to do business on the new ways that it's being presented. Yeah. Can I can I make a shameless plug for high tech? Yeah. So yeah, we, we toyed with the idea of whether or not to be an exhibitor this year or not. We don't really feel like it was gonna be a lot of, of, of excitement for it. You know, not a lot of people have budgets, but I, I'd, I'd say our 
position has evolved as we've talked to a lot of folks and seen some data. So the conversations I'm having, there's a lot of people that have never been to a high tech before because of the logistics and the expense of, of attending, right? It's flights and hotels and, and stuff. So a lot of smaller properties that typically are boxed out of high tech are actually going to attend this year to see what all the fuss is about and really talk to some vendors that they don't usually talk to. Um, but we, we, as a exhibitor, we can give out um, free show passes to a, a database of people as long as they're hotels, right? So none of you guys get a free pass, unfortunately. Oh. But any hotels that want to attend, um, we can give out free free tickets. Um, and so we sent an email to our database uh, earlier in the week, and it's the most engaged email we've ever sent. We had wow. so many people requesting the free tickets. So Is that because it had the word free in it? Probably. <laughs> but no, there was just a genuine – demand for it so if if anyone listening is a hotelier and not not a vendor that wants to get free um show tickets to high tech you just go to fueltravel.com slash high tech and that'll redirect you to a form that you can fill out and get free tickets again it doesn't work for suppliers so you guys are out of luck but if you're a hotelier and you want to go to high tech and you don't want to spend any money going fueltravel.com good news we all like to hear high tech I, I, I can see uh, I can see free tickets coming to Hotel Tristan Haywood. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stay there; the service is terrible. Wait, 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 what, what about what about Chris? What, what about Tr You broke up. What about what? Yeah, you run out of uh, a small little back up part of the house. What, what about that, Tristan? But yeah, yeah, it's, the the hotel is just over there. It's in the next yeah. room. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, fine. <laughs> it's more, more of an more of an Airbnb than an actual hotel, but close enough. Yeah. <laughs> same thing, but yeah, same thing. Yeah, it, it, yeah, same difference, same difference. But but to your point, I mean, I'd be very fascinated to find out from what High Tech is doing, sure, when you're there, mm -hmm. as to how much gets presented into the new world order of stuff. I mean, people are becoming more educated, thanks to people like Dean and so forth, about what meta search te uh, technology is needed and mm -hmm. what needs to be facilitated. Uh, and more and more hotels are realizing that this is a underutilized channel for them that they never either thought they could get into or step into but there's others too that they're also waking up to that and this is up from brand hotels but more more specifically the independents their crm their 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 actual databases um i'm proud to say that a lot of hotels are realizing the true value proposition of all that information that they never truly i wouldn't say exploited but utilized to a better potential than they've had up until this point because they realized the not the futility, but sometimes the uh, high spend to be in the space for PPC, to be in the space for paid social. And they're really just a core business of people that have already touched their product and can be identified in a better way. So, yeah, I don't know about you guys, if you're seeing this, but our, our clients that are really heavily utilizing their CRM this year, their own database are getting phenomenal results. We've had a few people do like, preview sales for their black friday deals or stuff like that because everyone's starting it earlier this year um but we we had a, a property it's it's about a 400 unit property beach destination that it's the first time we've ever broken a hundred thousand dollars in revenue from a single email this year wow and yeah. so is that world beach all for 2021 bookings so it, it's like getting a ton on the books getting the deposits in now people people are really ready to travel when they can what's the cancellation policy like on that given the current covid situation yeah i mean most most of them are pretty lax so these guys that have up to i think it's 40 48 hours no no hassle cancellation so they'll probably see some attrition but mm -hmm. you know a lot of these bookings are for june july of next year and very good um, okay. you know very good yeah. rate you bring up a good point that I threw into the topic of or the title of today's show to some degree, and that is second wave and uh, adaptive changes and so forth, because we are going through the second or third wave. Tris, you guys are getting hit hard. We're getting hit hard again. And it's not just, oh, this city here or this region here. It's going back up everywhere again. Well, you, didn't hear, you didn't hear the president say that the coronavirus is over, the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Well, and he's yeah. immune and, and we shouldn't be worried about that. And it's all. <laughs> Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. He's, right. he's immune from a lot of things, is that man? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like the truth being one of them. But anyway. 
Yeah, yeah. Let's all go to the Ukraine. At least that we know where the news is coming from. Uh, <laughs> but but the idea of it is is that what you just said happening in our society right now, people that may have been considering a holiday travel. Yeah. Now what? I mean, are they are they reconsidering it? Are they? We're being told in in regular media that. It's not so much big gatherings, which are bad enough, but now going up to grandpa's house is not a good deal because grandpa may have been hanging around some other people or whatever. I don't know. You know, I mean, so well, that's been a problem for a long time, but yeah. <laughs> grandpa's that's special. The thing, the <laughs> though, right. And just seeing the fast difference between the US and the UK and the amount of people that are willing to take a holiday vacation. I think US, the last poll I saw was yeah, you know, significant poll was like seventy eight percent of people were were willing to travel for vacation, whereas in the UK it was like one in ten. So <laughs> yeah. maybe we find a happier medium between reality and perception too. But we, we do have to consider the the fact that what we're being told in the US is very different. And uh, well, you know, I, I think the data points you, you need to be careful how you compare those because I think the one in ten UK was a an, a, a trip abroad, a vacation abroad because yeah. most Brits travel to France or Spain. Fair, fair. Florida, right? So, I think I think the one in ten was that. But you're right that Americans on our last sentiment study, it was like 85 percent of people said that they would consider a trip in the next 12 months, and nothing was stopping them from traveling. But we also see in the U U.S. that 53 percent of people have already traveled since March 15th, which blows my mind. But it's, I mean, I would assume everyone on this is at least the majority of people on this dais have all. Um, Traveled. I know I have. Lauren has. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. And we all and we all saw that stat this week, right? That was showing how how few people have been infected from flights. I don't want you know. I, I like having the news out there. I like amping up travel where we can. But at the same time, I want to see who paid for that study. And I was just going to say, was that for that study? Because that's the first thing I thought. That is not a bit surprising. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't sound as much as I really want air travel to come back. Me too. <laughs> totally, you know, because it will be like, impact me personally. But, yeah. but to Duke's yeah. point, you were saying there about the people traveling in the UK. Yeah, the, the, we we are seeing a lot of staycation travel um so because I, I i stay in a i think it's like the second largest um tourist destination in, in the uk um up here in the lake district outside of london and you you can't go into the lakes for falling over just tourists it's just mm. it, yeah i stay weekends i just stay away just won't go mm. anywhere near it um mainly because i don't like people now joking um, <laughs> but, <laughs> Um, so why not work in hospitality? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I work on the tech side. I work on the tech side. Keep me in that room. I'm fine. No, um, but it, similarly, we, we've got you know we've got hotels that we manage um, marketing over in the US. We've got them managed in the UK, and it's interesting because we can see different trends. So like the US has been slowly going up and up and up, and we're, you know we're, we're now at the point where you know we're over fifty percent occupancy level for the first time, or only the second time in however long. The UK. Since the um, uh, the new notifications, we've just been on a bit of a nosedive here. It's we, you know, we've we've got one property where as soon as there was any kind of um, uh, any kind of thought or hint that they're going to potentially bring further uh, lockdown in, cancellation rate just went up. It, it you could just mm -hmm. see like, well, I can't travel. We also work with a a car rental company, a, you know, a global car rental company, and it's slightly not hospitality, but it's close enough to to see. And we can see the same there in uh, because there's different countries. You can see what's going on. America is still going really well with car rentals, you know, especially in Florida and places like this. The UK, we, we can't give it away. Honestly, mm. we, can't, we can't give the vehicles away because what's the point? No one, no one's gonna, no one's gonna uh, commit. You know, and earlier in the summer, we were seeing that um, car rentals were actually going up. You know, the UK was the second highest behind um, uh, behind like France um, in Europe, I think. You know, but that was because we were coming out of the lockdowns and everyone's like, well, I'm not flying abroad. My old banger outside, you know, is going to fall apart. The car's going to fall apart. I'll go and hire a car and I'll go to the other side of the country. That's that's our uh, our assumption on what was happening there. Right. So we were seeing, that, but as soon as the restrictions start come in, you know, it's like Roas is just, it's like nosedived. Well, but this doesn't affect the drive by. This doesn't affect the drive by marketing of Stuart's home, uh, you know, his little home that people drive by to say this is the home of Stuart Butler, right? That people still rent cars. <laughs> yeah, but well, uh, we're not covering Papua New Guinea, um, so. <laughs> 
That's fine. Sorry, Can I just I pick raised up over on, on, on saying ROAS? Oh, like, sorry. There's, there's a raging debate in our office. Okay. And, yeah. and this is as bad as GIF versus GIF in our office, but it's GIF. very divided between ROAS and ROAS. Definitely ROAS, it's just quicker to say. ROAS, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm all about the efficiency. I say ROAS. I do too. We're, we're split. <laughs> I say ROAS. I, I, I say ROAS. And the creator, the creator of GIF, I say GIF, even came out and said that it is GIF, but uh, it, it's it's GIF. He's ne I always say GIF file. Yeah, I say, oh, GIF file yeah. ne next, next, you're going to ask me whether it's meme or meme. I mean, come on. Is it, purple? is it dressed purple or is it black? <laughs> so, the thing, I'm with Mimi. I'm <laughs> so the thing the, the thing for Mimi is um no the thing for me with ROAS is not so much the pronunciation is is it ROAS or is it return on investment or ROI, which are two ROI, very, yeah. they're two very yeah. different yeah. metrics. Right. They are but the amount of times I'm in conversations where people mix, they'll jump between ROI and ROAS or Ro ROI and ROAS, I'm like, make your mind up. Probably if you say ROAS, you've got to say ROI, right? <laughs> ROI. <laughs> Use yeah, the ROAS or ROAS or whatever you want to say it. I don't even like using it as a me measuring metric anymore because it's it's singularly within the marketing spectrum. It's not within the actual uh, goal setting KPI sharing with other departments. You know, And I say this in particular where if revenue management needed to garner another $100,000 in sales, and I did a some sort of targeted campaign that I had a twenty to one ROAS, ROAS, and and I, I made five thousand dollars in revenue for what I spent. I'm beating my chest like a gorilla, thinking that I succeeded when in fact I didn't hit close to the goal that really needed to be done, which was how much total revenue was contributed to it. What was the goal of this entire project? Not because I did some small singular return on on what I spent, but what did I contribute towards the goal of the KPI that we were measuring? That's, well, that's why, why I never goals goals is a key part of setting up your digital marketing campaign. Is your goal of return on ad spend? Is you've got to have a 20 to one. Well, okay, we can do that. Is your goal to hit a hundred thousand dollars and you need the volume? Ah, okay, well, we can do that too. But it may not have 20 to one, right? And so, right. you know, where, where's where's the happy medium and where do your priorities lie? And uh, where can you I, just look for the, the BS and attribution models too? Mm -hmm. Oh no! Don't mention attribution theft. Don't set them off. Don't set them off. Oh, you set them off. I was waiting for someone to mention it. You brought up. I brought up attribution. All right, the the two things that happen at the dinner table. Don't bring it up during Thanksgiving. You know how Grandpa is. Yeah. Politics, religion, and attribution models. Yes. <laughs> Do not bring it up when you know, stewards you know, around. I'd even say politics and religion were on the table. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but but to that end, I try to I, when I do the conversation, I tend to talk about what is the basement of, of conversion or cost return. A couple of my meta search campaigns for a couple of hotels dropped down to two to one. That's uns that's well below yeah. the threshold that we set. By the way, I want to look at that. If you need to send me a list of those hotels, there's yeah, something. Yeah, it's a it's it's a bit of a fluke because from they're branded hotels, so they're all on the same platform, and the yeah. other branded hotels that are in the same parking lot are ten to one. This brand of hotel dropped to two to one. Same rates, different brand. Send me that list of hotels when you have a chance. Sometimes right, there's something in there. there. <laughs> it's, it's it's just I'm looking at it going. How is that? This is ten to one right across the parking lot, but it's a different yeah. flag compared to this one. And I'm like, okay. So we're going to go know. back to going to go back to Google here with that one. And I'm presuming you're talking about Google Hotel ads. Uh, yeah, yeah, because, yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, yeah. We're pretty strong on the Google side. Yeah, because we we've been talking about this internally quite a bit. But the, for the last eighteen months, Google have been banging the drum about their automated processes, AI, machine learning, price of the end, whatever BS that they're going to, you know, say it's linked to. But they're really they're heavily, heavily pushing their own internal um, uh, money making machine because that's what it is. It's a massive money making machine for them. Sure. But I actually think they've gone even more nefarious now. It was Ben that actually uh, brought this up when we were doing testing. We were testing different bidding models for um, for a really big uh, uh, account that we had, because we were seeing the, the manual CPC that we had in place, the uh, the investment, the returns, whether it was revenue, um, ROAS or ROAS, whichever one you want to call it, they were they were going down. We're like, what what the hell is going on here? You know, what's changed? There's nothing that's changed. It doesn't make any sense. 
And, and then kind of say, well, let, let's throw in some of Google's automated bidding strategies here and just see what happens. Lo and behold, the return on ad spend shot right up. We hadn't really made any change. There was no change to, you know, there isn't a fundamental change to the business. There wasn't a change in what we'd been doing in the previous history. It, it, it couldn't be, you know, we'd eliminated all, all, all of the other um, possibilities. And so we're, we're, now, we're now at the point where we're saying, well, are Google actually tinkering with their own products that they don't want you to use and favoring their own products that may not necessarily be great for you, but they're actually making them slightly better? So they're actually to, to the detriment to, to force everybody off manual bidding or any kind of manual process and get them onto their own automated platform. Mm. So Tim, I, I'm sorry. You, you, you know I got a comment on that. <laughs> so yeah. so uh, actually when I was working with Wyndham, actually this goes back to the, it was the fall of 2018. And I had several uh, U US brands that we were running on Google Meta, and I was using the Google algorithms. I was actually managing it through the Google partner front end with, at the time, um, which by the way, I don't recommend anybody doing, but that's another story. So Google's algorithms were the ones that were driving the results off of it, and we were getting pretty good results, right? Uh, fast forward then to the spring of 2019, and we switched over to using one of the tech vendors. I won't name the tech vendor. And, it, and this is nothing against the tech vendor. But now we were using the tech vendors ROIs and their models and everything. Uh, and suddenly my, my return on ad spend, a lot of my numbers were not as efficient as they were when I was, use, was using the ones directly through Google. Mm -hmm. One of the things you've got to remember is that any tech vendor out there, and they, they will all talk about their black box, about how good their machine learning is, their algorithms are, and all that kind of stuff. And that's great. But they have one thing that, that Google, they lack one thing that Google has. Google is always touching the data. Google is right there and right there present. So if one of the tech vendors is updating their bids uh, twice a day, hey, congratulations. Guess what? Google's doing it live. Google's doing it every second. And their algorithms are constantly touching that data. So, yes, they're going to be more efficient. Uh, so, and, and, and they're doing it using data that you don't have access to. Exactly. Right? You have proprietary yeah. data. For example, one of their machine learning indicators that they use is propensity to book. So they know based on the searches you just made, how mm -hmm. likely you are to book in the next day, three days, seven days, 30 days. So, so, exactly right. so you, you don't have access to that. So they yeah. can adjust the bid to make sure you get that person that's ready and ready to book. So the example I gave there, I was mixing matching my, um, uh, my, my platforms there. That was actually with PPC, just with yeah. search rather than actual meta search. I, I completely agree with what you're saying there, Dean. I understand it with meta search. With, within PPC, you know, because we, we, we've obviously managed other industry sectors before as well. Google, whenever it's, it's very similar to, to SEO, whenever they make an algorithm update to their SEO, it's you, you, you hear come, you know, whenever there's this fallout from it and, and you know, business has been affected, people will say, Oh, we, we, we ran the numbers and it's something like 0.01% of people will be affected by that. Well, that's hundreds of thousands of businesses because Google is the world, you know, oh, well, maybe not the world, you know, obviously Yandex and um, they do over China, but you know what I mean? It's, it, it's that big, it affects so many different websites. Uh, out there, the same goes with any algorithm they up, they, 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 that they update. There's always a follow. It's never, it's very rarely you're going to make a change that's going to make a hundred percent of every business out there absolutely perfect. It's, it's just not, it's just not going to happen. I, I'd add to that a little bit is that we deal with progression conditions in our logic strings, and any vendor that we're out there with are conditional logic strings, if thens and ors, hmm. but. Google is dealing with a single step multi-dimensional view. They're looking at every first step as it correlates with every other first step mm -hmm. to know what the second step is. That's in essence an AI version, which is learning what it knows, what the data that it's being given, not following a progression of decision processes like a logic tree. And, and that's where some of the distinctions are between, you know, if you just think your budget size and bid are the influencers on your meta search, it's it, that's like saying you it's not doing what you need to do oh that, i bet you that was such a great uh, analogy that you broke just as you're going to say that's like 
Well, what was it going to be? I, I, like, I really need to know now. Oh, it was like driving a spaceship with a lever and a button. It's, there's a little bit more to it than uh, just the two functions. Yeah. Sorry. You know, and that's kind of how we're well, looking Lauren at it. Lauren has a button that mutes himself when he say <laughs> something that sounds really smart but doesn't have something to say. <laughs> yeah, it just flies me out right away. It's like, man, it must have been really good, but I just didn't hear it. Yeah, yeah. No. You just won't say. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a good one, though. That was a good yeah. one. Definitely. Yeah. But anyway, so, yeah, it did. It is It is to that, to, to that effect for it. But I think the ultimate baseline is, not being in there is like saying with the lottery. If you if you can't if you don't play, you can't. Got to be win. in it to win it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I just need to, to, to point out that obviously I've just criticized Google. Um, I take it all back because again they're probably listening, and I want welcome our Google over. By the way, you might yeah. want to clarify yeah. also not ruling the world, <laughs> ruling the, for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's ruling the universe, the universe. Not the world. The universe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm pretty certain. Have you guys that... ever heard the thought experiment about the great basilisk? Have you ever heard of this? No. No. So I, there, I, this is a genuine disclaimer. If, if you're easily scared by stuff, like this this is knowledge that you having could literally mess with your head. So <laughs> I'm serious. In all seriousness. If psychology <laughs> can really mess with you, turn this off for the next couple of minutes. So the theory is the great basilisk is that at some point in the future, an AI is going to be created, right? That is so powerful and knows everything. And that we as humans are going to be enslaved by this AI and everything we do has to be to serve the great AI, the great basilisk, right? So the argument is if that AI ever exists, and we know that it can pot potentially exist. Us now not doing everything we can to create it is not serving it. So we will be punished in the future for not creating the great basilisk in the present. So the fact that the great basilisk could exist and you're not doing everything to create it, you, you could be damned to all eternity because by the great AI that is going to happen. So what you're saying is the AI is pissed at us because we're slackers. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't given okay, a future not get theology into this, but maybe there already is a bass this week. Anyway, just <laughs> <laughs> there you it's go. what's called a knowledge hazard. But knowing it, it could create turmoil within you. So, yeah, it's, I guess I am definitely a hazard with knowledge. So, yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I did have a. Um, I, I, I did. For other show and tell, not that I have to do it at this moment, if, unless somebody else has something immediate to it. Uh, and we also have Robert's list that we have now. None of us have looked at because he dumped it on nine minutes before the show started. Uh, you haven't read it all in nine minutes. No, no, I, have not, I have not read it all you can in nine minutes. just read the headlines like everyone does. You know? <laughs> all right. You know, and infer the meaning. I, 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 did, I did have a few headers in. Oh, I did have, and he's paused, doesn't he? That's what he's doing. No, no, yeah, yeah. 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 a really great piece of information. For the no, this is this is this one. Sorry about the long string. I should have cleaned it off before I dropped it in. I was actually impressed with that article because it had some. Again, going to the theme I threw onto the title yeah. of the show today about second waves and, and adaptions and so forth. I'm getting is, a, I'm getting a yeah on the link. It's coming up. Oh. Page can't be found. I'm getting four or four on that one. Uh oh, let me see. Ooh, what the hell's that? Get rid of the percentage at the end. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he goes. Yeah, sorry. Anything from the percentage on which you get rid of. Yep, 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 yep. Sorry. Because, yeah, it, did, it, it broke. It's it's some neat um, ways that hotels have done, been doing creative things. That they're, mm. they're finding, like, water through stone, you know, ways to get somewhere with some of this stuff. And I thought it was it was fascinating to, uh, to to some of the creativeness that they had come up with. I'm more taken by the uh, the title "Why Tom Cruise is Living on a Cruise Ship." I mean, wow. why <laughs> wouldn't you? I mean, yeah. there you go. That's how you, name. <laughs> you know, to, to Stewart's point earlier that he made talking about working with the DMOs. I want to kind of circle back to that, actually, because that that is so important. And you might think about, well, destination marketing, that that's not me. At a, I'm, I'm an airport hotel. But guess right. What? Right now, it is about getting people to your destination. I don't care who you are, if they're, because if they're not traveling there, it doesn't matter. You've got to get the people coming there first. So, yes, you absolutely ought to be working with your DMO. 
Yeah, and, and they have so many resources that you may not, they might may be able to get you into to some very cost-effective co-ops with other members. They've got data that you certainly don't have and insight that you certainly don't have. Uh, right. They've got a lot of you know resources that we talked earlier about, B-roll video, they probably got a ton of photography. So you can really leverage a lot of this and save a ton of time and money. In, in, Asking them on a regular basis, you know, what markets are we seeing the people coming from at the top of the funnel? And you can adjust your advertising targeting to focus on those markets. Really effective. Yeah, and, and one thing that I think we all have realized in our earlier conversations too, people want to travel right now. People are almost desperate to travel right now. Uh, they just can't. Uh, right. right? Not and, not a model, uh, 53% of people have travel. But it's well, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Three hours, you know, and, and it's it's short direct duration. You know, it's two, two, three nights at most. Yeah, they're, they're doing it repeatedly. So the, there's a massive opportunity. If you can get someone to come stay with you once, you might get this, them to stay with you two or three times before the end of the year because they're making sure. frequent short trips in a local. Yeah, so the first goal is you've got to get them to go somewhere. Uh, I got to get them to go to Omaha, Nebraska or whatever it may yeah. be. So once you get them to go there, then it's about okay. Now get them to come to me. Exactly. Make sure that make sure they have a good time when they come to you, and then get them to yep. tell all their friends that they had a great time. It's there's it's that no secret recipe, but it's really easy. Totally, there's that heavy layer of chance that we're all taking and traveling these days. If you can find something that's consistent and something that will give you that comfort, yeah. you'll go back there a lot easier than you would have back in the day. Yeah, and so, I mean, as you're marketing, really try to stand out and focus on reassuring people that have fears, right? And again, we know that their biggest two fears are fear of other guests and fear of common spaces. So just implementing something like a mobile app, <clears throat> self-serving, but also <laughs> doing things like saying in your, in your marketing materials with deep cleaning the rooms seems to have a massive impact. Regardless of what deep cleaning means to you and means to them, it doesn't matter. The psychology of saying, oh, we're doing extra cleaning, the psychology of saying we're taking these steps to protect you has a big impact. And it's just like I've said this so many times on the show, but it's worth repeating. The first time you go to a grocery store, you're freaked out during the pandemic. The second mm -hmm. time, less so. The third time, less so. If we can get people to travel once, they're going to travel again. And then again, and again, and again. We just got to get them to open up their mind to say, responsible travel is safe. This is the safest place for me to go. As long as I'm re not reckless, I'm going to be fine, just as safe as I am at home. If you can get them to do that once, you can get them to do it again. And make sure you leverage them as your marketing for other people. Showing people that people are traveling, that social proof aspect of yeah. other people are doing it, you can too, is really, really powerful psychology. I don't disagree. I also say that we have new things that are influencing some of that, and that is we have become into a pattern of being fearful of some things that we were never fearful of before, groups or coming across people that are coming up to you like, just point to be taking. <laughs> you know, I say hi, walking my dog. I'm like, yeah, sure. Now it's like, ah, you know, run away. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, we have different things that we have to kind of get past our phobics for uh, our phobias uh, to do some of this stuff. But to your point, yes, as people do this, and I think from the holiday perspective, people will be even more motivated to be mindful. You know, now is the time, seize the day, carpe diem, all this stuff. I'm going to go see my family. With that said, I think there's modifiers. <laughs> <laughs> I keep breaking up, Lauren, at the worst time. You What's keep pausing on us. What's Sorry. The we lost the modifier. The caveat is, is that there's modifiers to this, and that is that um, we just launched a program with some of my hotels where going to visit family doesn't mean staying with them this year. Mm -hmm. Staying at a hotel, having dinner with the family, or having time with the family, but making it a controlled time for whatever, but not staying at the family house to do this, mm -hmm. you know, staying at a hotel instead to do that. I'm going to make sure my wires are off. That's, that. Sorry. that's a, that's a big thing over here in the UK. Cause obviously we're getting dangerously close to Christmas, you know, and, and we're, we're, we're just entering a tiered system of lockdown, uh, you know, from where you're going from like very high to danger and, you know, all of these different restrictions. It's, it, it, it there's there's been a lot of criticism about it. It's quite confusing. You know, what can I do in this in this tier? What can I do in that tier? What tier am I actually in? You know, all, all of that stuff. It's uh, it, it's been quite confusing. But the, the the worry is, if this continues until Christmas, 
what's going to happen then? Because obviously, you know, that's the whole family time. That's when, you know, that's, that's when we all get together. That, that you sit down and have a good roast Christmas dinner, man. Have to have, you got to sit down and have a big roast dinner with the family. Exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah, completely. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I had that conversation with my wife today. You know, like, you know, are, are we going to have, you know, her parents up and, and, and mine? And, you know, are, are they all going to come here? We're going to have extended family coming as well on top of that. Boxing Day, we go to another family member's and I have a second Christmas dinner, which is fantastic, you know, because I get two Christmases. Woo! <laughs> but now, now, you know, it, it, it's like, can we even plan for it? What side turkey do we buy? <laughs> it's, right. It's, it's, and, it's crazy as yeah. Can you imagine New York City, Times Square, New Year's Eve ball drop with nobody in nobody it? Nobody there. Sounds great, actually. I, I, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's actually where i want to be <laughs> yeah yeah but they, but they are they're canceling the event they're, right now they are not having or planning for a new year's eve event down down in times square not one that can be we have an audience they might have entertainment that they yeah. broadcast the for drop yeah and they'll still do the functionality but they're not going to have the crowd that they had before but yeah this adds you know from an impact to us it adds effects to things like one thing that we're also considering for hotels that are by shopping places or in metros and we're marketing to a rural community is it's already being t discussed that the the burden of online purchases are going to be bigger than they ever have been. Mm. More people are going to be doing it, but they said 57% of more people are going to be buying online than they would be. There's no Black Friday rush through the door. And the idea is that it's better to purchase and pick it up and it is to buy it and wait for it to be delivered because there may be logistics issues as to the timeliness of this. They're saying, don't wait, buy now, whatever. But we're actually putting, we have put packages together that are featuring order your stuff at stores that are by us and then come and stay and go get all this. <laughs> no, that's pretty small. Little, little things like that. It's not, it's not going to solve the world. It's not going to fill you up over days. It's just going to give you some business. Yeah, the other thing I'd say about it is just Cyber Monday in general this year, because you're right, I think it's going to shift more to cyber. A lot of retail stores have already said they're not doing in-store Black Friday deals. Mm. It's only online. I think Walmart are even saying that, which is mm -hmm. crazy. They're going to do all in November. Every, there's going to be uh, – right. they even have a name for it, like such and such days or whatever. Right, so that's the thing. Right. This year they're all starting earlier, so you can't wait. Like if you've done cyber – deals every year for the last five years like a lot of hotels have and they they work phenomenally if you're not doing it you absolutely should but if if, if you wait and try to deploy the same approach that you took last year it's not going to work because so many people are going to get out we actually um the next episode of our podcast that we recorded yesterday will probably go live this afternoon is all about how to tackle cyber monday and what to do this year that's differently than in previous years and how to maximize your opportunity but because people are so primed to travel, and I'm going to use the the phrase that Ben's not here to say it, but he would say revenge travel. So many people want to travel and want to get it on the books and look forward to it. Cyber Monday is going to be bonkers this year. It's banana and bonkers. That's a good word. I use bonkers a lot. That's, yeah. that's yeah. I like that word. Yeah. Well, I agree with you. Walmart is not allowing in person for for Black Friday this year. They're not doing one big event, right? They're doing lots of little things throughout. Every the week month. they're doing a series of sales. Um, I'm surprised they got into healthcare. I'm surprised they aren't just opening that up to go <laughs> <laughs> Well, and and it, this opens opens up a whole new world of targeting as well. Is you can begin to target people that follow or work with the delivery portions of Walmart, Target, uh, Best Buy. You know you. Can, thing that comes away from not shopping and that is you don't get to browse i know that from we do the the pickup delivery services at walmart they throw in so much stuff now samples of stuff mm -hmm. yeah, because do. i'm not browsing really? the store anymore i'm pulling up popping the trunk waiting for them to throw the bags in and i'm out of there i'm and so glad I'm not the browsing it, it's it, there's no benefit comes from browsing you just spend up spend more money than you planned on spending. no benefit for you. no benefit well, to you <laughs> No. For the store, though, it's a lot of benefit. From a grocery yeah. perspective, I'm I'm a cabinet cooker when it comes to this. I'll go through the aisles of groceries and like I'm grabbing something. My wife's like, 
well, why do you need that? I don't know. I just don't have it. Don't, you know. <laughs> All right. But then, then when I go to go cook. Yeah, no, it's the same. You never, ever, ever go shopping at Walmart or anywhere like that when you're hungry. It's the Sorry. worst oh, gosh, thing you can possibly do. I did it the other day. Spent so much money. Yeah, <laughs> put half of it away, you know, because you know, short, yeah. short produce dates. It's like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah, wife's going to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> But, but it's true. Kiwis are on sale. I needed 24 kiwis. I'm going to eat those in a week, right? Everybody yeah. loves kiwi. Come on. You need a kilo of avocados. I mean, come on. It's a kilo. <laughs> it's on sale. Yeah, don't get me started on Costco. I leave always going, how the hell did I spend that much money? Right. Yeah. Why am I looking at three watches? Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing online ordering at Costco now, Lauren, to avoid the, the impulse buys. They, Dude, they, when I show up, when I used to show up a car, a car to ride around and have me somebody follow me so I could they could just load the basket for me. It's like, well, it's great. welcome back. You um, can do store pickup like you do at Walmart now at Costco. It's great. Yes, but the idea is that from our perspective, if people are looking for gift buying, they're not browsing as much and they may not be thinking about gift ideas. We can interject ourselves in those conversations a little bit better now because we can target those people that are following these types of mediums and say, hey, look. A gift for Uncle Fred here because you don't know exactly what he wants, but maybe he wants to go to our hotel, you know, yeah. because of whatever, you know. So you want to you want to bring up gift cards, Lauren? You've had a lot of success with those in the past with some of your properties. Well, gift cards have been fun, actually, a lot of fun. We're doing right now a campaign with one hotel that has been very successful, where we're giving the fifty percent add-on value that you can either keep or give. It's being kept more than it's being given, um, but you know, for every fifty bucks, they're getting twenty. But honest to gosh, people are dropping five, eight hundred thousand dollars on these things. You, you couldn't have uh, it again, Lauren. You couldn't have it. It's like I am going to tell you the meaning of life right now. And then <laughs> I do not know <laughs> what my dysfunction is today. I swear to God, nothing's changed on my technology. <laughs> you know what I've realized though? Other than the odd time when he's about to say something really profound, 90% of the time you can miss 10 seconds in the middle of what wrong. <laughs> Still pick up again. Yeah. And pick it right back up. Okay. Gift cards, we're offering 50% benefit, even as low as $50. So for 50 bucks, they get 25 free. They can keep it or give it. They're usually keeping it. There's no cap limit to it. And people are dropping five hundred to a thousand dollars to buy these things because they're getting fifty percent extra by doing it, and, and, and it's all future tense stuff. There's a Cyber Monday offer for you, gift cards. That'd be a good one. It'd be interesting because Stuart, you know, you mentioned about um, you know how uh, everything's going to Cyber Monday. Um, I was uh, I was I was actually searching for the um, uh, what, uh, what happened there. Oh, we lost Stuart. You pissed him off. No, you did. I said his name, and I, I, I won't say what's his name in case I like, get rid of it. Beetlejuice. <laughs> Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> that was the other way around. I'm just killing you. It's gone. Um, but uh, to, to Stuart's point where he was talking about Cyber Monday being uh, bigger, uh, I, I was actually looking for the for the article. I, I, I just found it because it was only uh, recently. Amazon Prime Day. Uh, was, it, was it yesterday, the day before? I can't remember. Um, they... Uh, they're saying that third-party sellers in the marketplace have increased by 60% from last yeah. year. 3.5 billion during this year's prime day. I found it for slightly longer than... And they did promote it as much this year, and it was later, right? So, yeah. yeah. It, it, but you, Cyber Monday is going to be bonkers, I'm telling you. It, I, I totally agree. I think I think Cyber Monday, if, if you get your offers right, and if you try something inventive and try something different, and the trick is it has to be an offer. It can't just be, I'll give you 5% off the stick. Right. Ain't going to work. It's got to be compelling. It's got to be. Yeah. You can a value add, but it, it definitely has to be enticing. Whatever the offer is, yeah. I mean, by offer, I mean generic. You know, you're absolutely right. Valued add, discount, whatever it needs to be. It just needs to be something in there that, that that's going to say, what? if I don't book this now, am I going to lose out that FOMO? We're, we're, we're actually trying to put together another package where we're reaching out to the local restaurants and retailers to offer us an actual value as a part of a package of staying and having like this will get you dinner or this will get you, uh, uh, you know, a $50 credit in the store or whatever to put together a whole reason to be. But this is also a vendor because the first person we reached out to was actually an apple orchard. 
that does these really cool things from yeah. mazes to uh, all this other stuff. And, and they're, they're, they're going to give you a bushel of apples and you're going to do this, this and this. And it's all part of the, when you stay with us, you get this as a part of what you just bought. And it's not a package at the hotel per se. It's a package that we're wanting to sell kind of in the medium that we're talking about right now, which is saying, Hey, look, this is a, a gift. Yeah. A great yeah, value. Sure. And it shows the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, in regards to the community, this is this is my segue. I, I got to leave this community for the day. <laughs> that was, that's the best I can do. The best I can do. But I'm not. Oh, smooth. That's smooth. <laughs> Are you choosing some another community? Yeah. Are yes. Are you going to another community? Should we be jealous? No, <laughs> no community. This is uh, the the Gmail community. It's not that fun. Um, <laughs> 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 Take care of my Friday, but it was really good being here with everyone again. And uh, it's, it was yeah. great to have you back. And, 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 no, no, go ahead. I was going to say, if people want to find you, obviously, know more about ScreenPilot and all this stuff. Sure. Yeah, just, in, just but... the, the website in there through ScreenPilot.com, digital marketing agency for hotels. Uh, reach out at any point. It's these kind of conversations that we like to have with our clients too. Uh, you know, everything from that we discussed today to the, the fringe conversations. Honestly, <laughs> the whole. Amazon documentary thing is something I'm totally going to bring to the team and we're never going to do, but I really like the idea. <laughs> Those are the fun conversations that I think we all have with our own internal teams too. Mm -hmm. Everyone yep. here able to connect with. So um, always awesome to be here and uh, I'll, I'll be back and I'll try to bring someone else from the team next time too. Yeah. Bring, so bring some people folks over. In Absolutely. Griff, thank you. Thank you for making the time. It's good to see you again. Hey, Griff. Likewise. Take care, everyone. Bye, buddy. Bye now. Bye-bye. And by the way, Griffin was patient zero of COVID because he, <laughs> he was the first person I know in the industry that got it. So Yeah, he was for us. Yeah, when he, he said he went through the whole yeah. ICU and everything. Yeah. yeah we, he, 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 he was the first person I know who had it full stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, when, when did yeah. he get it? Uh, it was like last year. He got it last year. It was 2019. Oh, really? <laughs> no, okay. no, I'm joking. Yeah, I know. It was... Uh, Allegedly. I think it was April, wasn't it? March or April. He was one of the early on. Yeah. yeah, he was he was on. On. yeah. I, I know a guy in Barcelona who got it in March. Barcelona? Yeah. Barcelona. We need um <laughs> Griffin to come back on and tell us when he got it. Yeah, I gotta <laughs> find out what the date is for. But he was here. Yeah, he was. He was for that. But and then that's the other part too. There's are there are people that have gone through this that are definitely on the carpe diem phase of I am going to go somewhere. I'm going to go travel. I am not going to go over and ignore not being able to do something. Yeah, because. I've heard it referred to, you know how people have a bucket list? Well, if you replace the first letter B with the letter F, you have a different kind of list. <laughs> a lot of people are saying that their effort list is what they're going to focus on in the rest of 2020 because it's like, screw it. I'm just going to do what I've always wanted to do. So it's not a bucket list. It's a so, yeah. do, do you pronounce that word or is it like the ROAS ROAS conversation? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just, I'm curious. <laughs> hey, hey, if we weren't in polite society right now, I'd be saying the full, the full phrase. So. Yes, indeed. Well, that seems ironic that we're having polite society and Tris is with us. I, yeah. just, <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> we're talking about the audience, not, not the, the participants. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, we can pick some... Oh, Robert. I found an article I want to share with you guys. Let me find it. Okay. Um, I want I want you to see. This was a study recently commissioned, and let me see if you guys can figure out who commissioned the study. Let me see if this is the increasing importance of OTA travelers in economic recovery. Let me get. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's the one. That's let, the one. Yeah, you, you dropped it in before. Let me guess. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know if I'd put it in there or not. No, so, you know you did. You did. I, I was. I was looking at this. With yeah. So, so who who could have commissioned the study that illustrates yeah. that OTA travelers are more valuable than non OTA travelers and does how it, important they are in recovery? Does it does it rhyme with Techpedia? <laughs> it does. It does. It's or, the uh, effect. Hotels dot com. <laughs> Yeah, it's the most self-serving study I've ever seen since the airline one we talked about earlier. But um, yeah, it's just it's funny because people read headlines and don't really scrutinize. I, I, I saw I saw a survey that nine out of ten people enjoy the podcast from Fuel Travel. From Fuel Travel <laughs> I was going to mention about self-serving and keyless entry, but I didn't want to go there. 
<laughs> hey, I, I, I'm the first to be honest. Sorry, I, 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 sorry, I'm getting a call. I'll, is that yeah. oh, this is kettle? You're black. Yeah. Okay. No problem. <laughs> Which, by the and way, the tenth, you bought your popcorn yet? Yeah. <laughs> and and that tenth employee is no longer an employee. <laughs> <laughs> Now nine out of nine people enjoy the podcast. Oh, right. <laughs> they would get legitimate reviews, and they're all five out of five. So yes, they are. I, I made sure I actually went through them and put a review in because I'm, I'm beginning to see how they do affect how you get shown up. <laughs> yeah, we we put out. We really got aggressive on the show. Like about three or four weeks ago, we started just being stupid. How we like to be stupid about reviews. And we there was one episode where literally every couple of minutes we'd say, "Did you leave a review yet?" We just we were obnoxious about it, like we like to be. And we we ended up getting like five reviews in the next couple of weeks, and we've seen a marked improvement in downloads. And I don't know if it's just because of that, but it, it's been interesting, at least anecdotally, there seems to be a correlation. I'm trying to get uh, this link cleaned up. I was going to go over and uh, share it from Google because I actually had a question about dynamic ad placement that was in the uh, recent ad manager blog from Google Ads. And I had some questions about because I didn't quite understand some of what it was saying we're now capable of doing. And I was thinking that, you know, if, Stuart, if you were there in Trist too, is that uh, if you had some sense of what it did. Here, let me, I'm going to yeah, clean up the. Yeah, it makes more money than Google. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's why, that's why you don't understand what it does because you don't. They don't want you to understand what it does. You don't need to understand. Just give us money. We'll take care of it. Yeah. That yeah. One. yeah. It's, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's it's uh. It was talking about an ad manager and dynamic ad insertions, and I'm not familiar with that per se. I'm I'm I'm, I'm familiar with YouTube and you know pre and post and 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 in term and and gateway and, and lead gen. I mean, all with that, but I didn't understand about this, this ability to be dynamically dropping in on things that you didn't specifically designate, you know, uh, it just was, I don't know part of it. So I thought I'd go over and throw that up and ask what that was. Is this in, in, in talk about in display? What's that? Are they talking about in, in the display network? Uh, that I, again it, for me, I didn't know what this was actually referring to. I, I I was looking at, I was like, okay, what really was this? Was this is this just the display ad? Is this is this is the video insertion? Is this into or was talking about? I'm like, okay, yeah, I need to read through it. It really, mm. yeah, I mean, just I mean, I'd be happy to bring it up later. Just it was one of those ones. It's like, okay, this is. Interestingly different that I'm not too familiar with. Because this 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 looks different from what I thought you were talking about with with dynamic search ads. Because okay. it, yeah, because they've got they've got a DSA in place um, that that's designed more for uh, large SKUs. You know, lots lots of e-commerce products. The idea being that you couldn't build a, a an entire um, ad campaign out for every single product you've got. So you'd build it for your core products. Then you kind mm -hmm. of build a, 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 the, the dynamic aspect that f plugs the gaps, um, and, and we've seen it. Um, we've we've tried it. We've used it with with a couple of different things, um, and it, yeah, it's it, it it's been all right. It's not you know certainly nothing to shout about or write home about. I think if you've got if you've got a big enough uh, digital marketing campaign that would require that, then you're probably better off putting the time and effort in and building your campaign out yourself, then you can kind of control it. I think the idea is it's meant to be more, if you've got an internal um, digital marketing team and it might be like one guy or girl that's running it, then that that's where these type of products really, really help. Oh, out. okay. But um, this, this is something, this is something very different from what I thought. It yeah. It just, it just popped up this week and I was like, uh, I was going to ask about it because I, I, it was just something that didn't it strike me as being familiar and or the same as what I understood it to be. So, sorry, it was just one of those little questions that popped up for me that I didn't quite uh, understand going through. So, I'll, I'll probably bug you guys more about it later as, and also as I read more or they share more, I guess, as to about it. But, anywho. Well, that's, uh, that, that's the key. If you can get, if you can dynamically insert relevant and even better personalized information into ads, um, at the right time, that that is absolutely fundamental. In fact, that's one of the products that we're 
very very close to uh, to putting out to uh, to launch is a uh, a dynamic um, insertion ad well, uh, dynamically inserting live prices into uh, into adverts um, you know to, to get that in front of the, the the relevant person at an earlier point in the in the booking cycle so that'll be that'll be with us very very shortly but um, more follow on that when we're when we're ready. Well, you know, I'm first in line to go over and, and cash in my ticket on that one. Yeah, absolutely, no, no bother, no bother at all. I'm like you're shamelessly pl plugging a product on the show, man. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. No I just, just it, it, it's the Brits. It's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? I blame Lily. Honestly, I do. <laughs> there were no shameless plugs on the show until Lily joined, and then well, Lily has told us that she is so busy up and through the election. I guess you know she's helping. No, she said it had nothing to relate it to, but she's just so busy right now. She's not going to be able to join us. She asked if Amy could join us on a regular basis. I'm like, sure, Amy can pop in if she likes. So we might see Amy come in from uh, Gitgo uh, a little bit more often. So you broke um, then on, on what Lily was so busy with. Was was she busy okay. man, man, manipulating Facebook um, likes to swing political influence? Is that what you were saying? I think so. Yeah, I okay. think she's she's gone to the dark side and she's doing this <laughs> stuff. Oh, yeah. hey, guys, here's a question I've got for you. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how much Facebook advertising you do, and um, Stuart, maybe you you, you 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 might have a lot on your team, but we've been seeing huge evidence of Facebook arbitrarily banning accounts and individuals left, right, and centre. It's like the you know lunatics are taking over the asylum in in that spot. I, d I don't know if you guys are, are seeing the same. Yeah, I, we haven't on our accounts, but I've heard the same from my sister company, and. Um... You know, it just seems like they're being very heavy handed trying to prevent the, the types of stuff Lauren's talking about. And they're just overreaching with that. I, you know? I don't even think it heavy handed comes into it. We we had um, I've seen evidence of one ad that was for insurance in Canada mm -hmm. and it got banned for political reasons, politic, political motivations. I'm like, yeah, but you got to think there's, there's one or two things is happening, right? It, it's it's probably algorithmic. It is, so definitely. There's a glitch in the matrix. Or if you look at the, the folks that are manually doing approvals and disapprovals, I mean, they literally have a second to look at something and make a decision. It, it's it's mm. ridiculous. Yes. So the yeah. human error component is massive. It's yeah. huge, yeah, because there's, 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 the, the issue you've got as well is that the rules and the guidance by both Google and Facebook mm -hmm. are so subjective. It's like you're not allowed to advertise this, and, and what this is is very – very loose because we, we get this quite a lot it, you know you can often you can put an, one ad uh, out especially on facebook you'll put an ad out and they'll say no denied breach of policy you'll then go back and, and um, appeal it and they'll say you know it doesn't because of this this and this and like, oh yeah no problem then you'll go and create the same ad again maybe do it in a different geographical location and they'll get through you'll do it again in a third geographical location they'll get denied again yeah. it's just crazy it's all over the place yeah. my own personal account got locked um i i got i got my own person and I, I mean i've had a facebook ad account for for years absolute years i've been doing this for as long as i can remember and they, they've blocked me um for no reason whatsoever there was just they couldn't they could not give me a reason at all absolutely nothing i'm like okay appeal well, Lauren, Lauren, I may have reported some of <laughs> You may have dropped some photos on your page that you weren't aware of. There lies the problem with any type of censorship, and that is who makes the choices, who makes the decisions, and how are they made? And it doesn't matter what level. I mean, there are things that should obviously be censored. Totally get that. But somebody still has to make those decisions and, and put rules to that. Uh, mm -hmm. I can remember back in, I, I was a big anti-censorship guy back in college, actually, in some political science class. And I was doing this this piece about uh, Walmart censoring the music that was going to be sold in their store. And one of the albums that they told that they chose to censor was Frank Zappa's Jazz from Hell. Uh, and they said that they were going to not sell it due to explicit lyrics. Well, what you need to understand is that that album is entirely instrumental. <laughs> And, and by the way, it's horrible. I had to actually, I then was on a mission to go out and find it and buy it just because I had to see what was this all about. And it's horrible. But <laughs> Walmart was censoring it just because, they, nope, that can't sell on ourselves. So who makes those choices? I'm still I, fighting I, with Facebook right now. Uh, we, you know, I think I mentioned a few weeks back that our uh, business manager account got 
hacked. Hacked. Our, our oh, got hacked. hacked, guys. He got hacked. Um, okay, okay. That's what he said when he. Uh, oh, that's what did it come out? Hacked. Yes. Yeah, said, our business manager account went. <laughs> <laughs> it got hacked. It got hacked. And oh, they, no. they, 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 then they went over and started blowing up ads on our client accounts, spending their credit card because they kicked us out of the financial control and admin access. And we finally wow. got it cleared up. So we thought they, they stopped them and so forth, but they shut down our ad manager capabilities. Mm -hmm. So I've been going back and forth with Facebook and then they shut down their chat because they were so busy with what we just talked about that they shut that, that down, finally opened it back up. I got on the other day, I was over four hours on this with their concierge service only to find out that he couldn't fix it and has to forward it over because it's not an ad manager account. It's still the business manager account has something wrong and they got to fix it. But now they forward me over to it. I got to still wait for somebody to eventually get back with me about you cut out again. as a partnership. So it didn't hurt anything. We were able to continue on from via something else, but it just, it's annoying because this is when you really realize you're playing in somebody else's sandbox. You I, do not control. There's them. a moral to the story, though, isn't there? Right? Don't have your password set to I Heart Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the first one. Was I Heart Stewart? I got to tell you, I, it was the Tristan get. one. <laughs> so I, I, I always think about this as well. That the decision makers behind Facebook, I've just got this mental image: is every decision just goes to Zuckerberg. And he's just sat there like, that's why he's so overwhelmed. Uh, no, yes, no, yeah, you know, it's just one guy in charge of this whole face. Well, a lot of these departments are, are closed off to other departments. Facebook is- Well, wow, they're, they're very deliberate. If you, if you, if you really dig into the, 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 the whole team that deals with this, because it's, you would think it's, it's simple, right? It's black and white, but it really gets yeah. nuanced in, in, in terms of what you can show, what is news versus what is not. There, there was a massive debate a couple of years ago about breastfeeding images on Facebook. Mm. So they have very well documented criteria for what gets blocked, what doesn't, how how it gets blocked, why it gets blocked. But the thing is, they're not their, their policy is we're going to keep it all internal. We're not going to let people know why we're doing things and what we're doing it for. So that that's where the challenge comes. But they're very very deliberate about it internally. It's, it's well, they've got they've got a whole department that just actually looks at, is if anything gets flagged that they're literally watching twenty four seven. This department is watching what would essentially be censored, you know, videos that have been uploaded on Facebook. Well, the burnout rate in that job as well yeah. is really high because you think about the stuff that they're censoring. I mean, it, oh, it, it's horrendous. Right. There's like yeah. dismemberment. There's murders. There's all kinds of stuff that people try to post to the network, yeah. and someone physically has to look at it. Now, a lot of it is AI driven now, but there's still that human component, and they say it it's really disturbing. To, to but that's my, the problem. The a AI is not at a level where it can distinguish between an image or, or, or two. You you can you can fool. AI very very easily because it's not sophisticated. It's not the basilisk yet. It it's not there. It, the it, great and uh, powerful basilisk. The great, yeah. Exactly. It, it it is not at, at that level. And as much you know, because this is we we talk about the buzzwords about machine learning and AI and and they're they're, they're arbitrarily thrown out by by lots of businesses that say that they're using it when the reality of it is what they're actually using isn't quite really there. It's mm. good, you know, because. It's just not. It's not good enough to do um, uh, everything that we we were led to believe in some cases. And 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 looking at, I mean, I'm only going off all data here. I could be wrong. Google are moving at that 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 breakneck speed. You never know what they're capable of doing. But I, I'd be very surprised. Very surprised. And I think I think Will Smith should not have killed Vicky. I think she he should have let Vicky live. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Remember iRobot? No, iRobot. <laughs> iRobot. The movie iRobot. Yeah. 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 Vicky yeah. should have lived. Let the robots control our safety. I'm good. <laughs> there you go. Which actually brings up an interesting question I've been meaning to ask you guys. So, would you have a robotic arm? Yes, I would. Yes. <laughs> so I've got a YouTube channel, right? So Basecamp Meta has a YouTube channel. I've got some content on there. And I've got a confession to make. I have a problem. I go to YouTube to manage my videos on there, and I've got a serious poor squirrel disorder thing going on because I'm there to manage my videos, and all of a sudden, ooh, a new trailer for the next Spider-Man movie. Yes. Yeah. And the next thing you know, I flip between 10 of these things, and as an hour later, I'm like, oh, crap, I didn't get anything done. All the YouTube hole. 
<laughs> it, it's called a YouTube hole. You can literally just fall in a YouTube hole and, and then three hours right. of your life is gone. Yeah. Hey, have you, Dean, have you watched The Social Dilemma on Netflix yet? I haven't yet. I, I know what it is. I need Go to watch, watch it. it and you'll understand why that happens because they really well, I know why it happens. <laughs> very, very deliberate. They understand what dopamine does to the brain and they understand how to make you specifically get a dopamine hit after every one of those videos and knowing that the next video is going to do the same again. It's it's a science, man. It's the, the movie place. trailers are the ones that I'm a huge sucker for. I, I mean, I have a know they know everything about you. They know everything that's going to pull the trigger <laughs> and, they, and they learn every time you don't do it, they'll learn from that and be smarter about it the next time. It's, it's by the way, Tris, it, or what Stuart's saying, there's probably a connected to your Facebook blocking because if you look at the videos, it'll probably pop up. <laughs> 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 it might be an indicator of why your Facebook ads. Well, but see, that's that's the thing. What I like to do when I go on Facebook is arbitrarily search for something very random and then just just be super eclectic just to, just to try and throw off their algorithm. Does yeah. that work? No. <laughs> is that, is that what you told the police when they came around and asked you why you were searching for that? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. <laughs> I was random stuff, Your Honor. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, no. I, I try to avoid, I mean, it, it kind of goes back to the beginning conversation we had at the beginning of the show about the CTV and so forth and so on. You know, I look at these things because I use like ATTV now and so forth, or everything's on my Roku. Oh, uh, why? why? You cut out. What? We had Roku. Roku. I don't have. I use Roku. I don't have Roku. <laughs> I use Roku. I use Roku. Roku Wait, which is, is it? You just you flip flop twice. I do. I have Roku. Okay. I don't have cable. Oh, right. okay. He has Roku. I like yes. Roku. I have Roku. Uh, anyways, and that's where I see all these ad spaces too. Now Google just came yeah. up with their Google TV. Bought it. Did it. Plugged it in. Um, and Apple, you know, I, Apple have got theirs. Yeah, Apple has theirs, and they're they're consolidating all their Apple services together. Mm -hmm. By the way, for those Apple people, I ordered my phone today. Why? Uh, well, it's, I have, I have I, Apple in the house. I, have, I'm I, a, use, I'm I use Apple devices, but well, there's no value proposition to me to get the the iPhone. What well, is for me? My my I my my a ten. I have to replace right now. I have to keep it tethered to a power cord because Apple has shut off my battery. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's telling me I got to buy the new phone, so it shut off my battery. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I I usually do it in couple two to three year cycles. Yeah, I was I always two years religiously, but they just haven't innovated in four yeah. years. Well, this one, I'll tell you why I got the twelve Pro is because of the lidar. I'll be honest with yeah. you. I'm a you know I'm an AR freak. Yeah. And 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 to have the lidar and what's going to come with the lidar and the AR, I want I want to, I want the phone to have the lidar on it because I want to be able to see what it can do. No, sorry, what be is lidar? I don't know huh? that one. What is that? What is that? Light emitting light. Uh, anyway, it, it it checks the spatial relationship by seeing how fast light bounces back to the phone, so it can focus huh. at any dimension in the room. So when AR is going to be used by the phone, which more and more item in the physical dimensions of the space that you're in so it can put a pot of flowers on the table or it can put a chair in the corner correctly sized to, to, to the dimensions of the room so uh, can i say i actually used ar for the first time in a practical experience recently and i don't know if you've seen this but on amazon on the mobile app now certain products if they're home furnishings you can you can switch if you're scrolling through the photos of the product you can go to an ar view and actually show the product in your home where it belongs yeah. and i've seen yeah. furniture stores do this before but we did, we just bought a new house and and we were looking for a trash cans and we were going to get one that was like a dual recycling and, and regular trash can and i just didn't know i'd measured and i'd, I'd knew it would fit but i was like i wonder what it will look like right here in this spot and then i found this ar thing and i held it up and then i got my wife to come give it the thumbs up and as soon as she gave it the thumbs up then we, we bought it because um, of the, AR feature. the other the other tool i like on amazon is the uh iris one that you can uh look at an item in a store you know obviously i'm not using it near as much as i used to and just look at it with the amazon it would see what the item is and see if it's for sale what it would be for sale for on amazon yeah. compared to the store that you're in at the time was another one that i used but yeah you know oh by the way Stuart, every time i see the geico commercial where the dude goes up to the attic of his new house and he sees those little mannequins <laughs> <laughs> you and your little room yeah 
<laughs> Sorry, Stuart, uh, Tristan, you may not have the, uh, no, the uh, not uh, going, right? insurance. The, uh, the guy goes up to his attic, to his new home, and they say, wow, they left a lot of stuff. And he turns the lights on, and it's got this freaky Halloween display of mannequins sitting around a table like they're having tea. And it's like, he's like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> and I'm thinking that's like Stuart's little secret room in his old house. is like somebody walked in, they're going, whoa, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> I should do that. I'm just selling. I'm just selling a house right now. I should go and do that and just leave that in the attic. That would yeah, just just leave the mannequins in the attic and see what happens to it. But yeah. anybody else? I mean, Oculus is coming up with their new version That's that doesn't true. get tethered. Yep, that doesn't get tethered to the computer. Although you can, if you want to, for the more enhanced games. Anybody else interested in it, or is it just? I just I think VR is always going to be fringe. I don't think until until it's in, implanted in the eye somewhere way, it's not strapping on a device. VR is not going to take off mainstream. It'll be used a lot, but it's not going to be like my my parents are never going to use it, right? And that's See, I actually think the reverse of that. I think your parents will end up using it. No. And I say this because of a little bit what Amazon's doing right now. I mean, there's a question come up with their new adventure thing. No, they, AR, they are they will. VR, they won't. I, I don't. I mean, I think well, it's a fringe group of people will use that Amazon. Okay. Now let, me, let me back up a little bit because, you know, I've been a 360 camera fan for a while. Is if, if Grandpa can't travel anymore, but you would love to have Grandpa enjoy Barcelona, Okay. What's to say you can't do <laughs> VR, okay? Yeah. And let him go down uh, Las Ramblas. There's some really cool companies. I've just just walked in there. Uh, Art Media. Um, I know. Uh, I know a, a, a chap who works there. Um, they're doing some really really cool stuff. Um, they're actually. It's more hologrammatic. 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 Shall I say? Um, then uh, AR and VR, is, you know, it's all kind of loosely the, the same. But the <clears throat> the quality that they've got with the, with their video presence is just unreal. What it, what you do, you, you stand in one of their booths. It basically three your know, three sixty like maps you, and it can drop you live, um, real time, anywhere on the planet. Star Wars nerd in me is getting major excited about this. It is this brilliant. Is, <laughs> this is exactly what they do in Star Wars. Yeah, so that exactly yeah. that that bit where it pops up and you do the live thing. This is all live. It's all it is amazing. They've done it before. Where it's like up on stage, where they'll have somebody walk out on stage and they'll talk to you, and that person is three thousand miles away in a different That's country. Really, really cool. Right. Oh well, you yes. saw it on the Drew show, the Drew Barrymore show, where they did the whole projection onto the same screen, so you could see both people as if they're in the same room. There is new technologies like that that I think. Are going to be interesting as to what they get used for. Hmm. So they, this, this is, I mean, this sort of stuff here. That if if they'd had that, if people have been more switched on, this is the sort of stuff that you could have. Um, you know, that, that that would help with COVID or you know, like being able to beam into different places. And yeah, you know. I'm going to go get my Sith robe yeah. and go start talking to my apprentice. <laughs> yeah, what Lauren was talking about earlier about touring Barcelona. There's actually on the Oculus Quest. Uh, there is an app. Uh, you remember that? There's that movie Free Solo, that guy that does the mountain climbing thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a short version of that you can do on the Quest, and they used a combination of you know, drones and everything to get all the footage. And I kid you not, you feel like you are climbing up that mountain. I mean, the the visuals. I mean, it is intense. It's frightening. Yeah, it's, VR that's how is amazing. It, it, and if you look at the studies, they, they, it shows that the brain, the memories it creates in the brain and the way your brain interacts is just the same as real life. If you're watching a screen, like a video game, it, it, it uses different parts of the brain and the memories are stored differently. But VR is actually stored just like real life. Your uh, brain literally I'm, thinks you're seeing things in real life. I'm not, just, I'm not sure on that one because I've been playing Call of Duty Mobile far too much and all I keep seeing is crosshairs right now. And it's like, <laughs> like okay, yeah, no, I need to stop playing that game. That's, yeah. <laughs> A friend of mine just sent, uh, and it, it, I'm looking for the link and I can't find it to share, but I'll put it in the show notes if I do. Um, is... <laughs> <laughs> what? What <laughs> got out again? Right in the is. What I did is. It's a haptic chair. It's a chair that has the haptic sensors in it so that you feel the vibrations and the movement. Yeah. Plus, it's a 360 swivel that the Oculus plugs into. And so you have the foot pedal control so you can actually, quote, walk or control, you know, spin around like you're in the car and so forth, and it will move. And so it's a, 
it's a more uh, uh, in, in, in engaging. It's Ready Player One. It's, 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 it's very much like Ready Player One, Ready player but not one. with the super That's technology right there. there. Yeah, but you, the idea of it is, and I, you and I, I go back to this to, to where you said, no, I don't think my parents would do it. I think the more sedentary people will eventually become, the more they want to experience other things. People, you know, I quoted on something that Max Sarkoff dropped in on LinkedIn from uh, Hospitality Net about is Amazon trying to get back into the travel space with this new virtual adventures thing that they're doing? And, and uh, I commented about the fact that I think what they're doing is that they have this medium of opportunity with Prime and everything else that this might be something for maybe fringe at this point, but eventually grandpa can't get around anymore, but we can bring him on the family vacation or, or, or we can bring him to a place in the world that he wants to go back to, or, or better yet with the cameras that are available, recording things that he can go back and relive again in first person context. Especially with a haptic suit. Because there's certain dates that Grandpa would like to go back and revisit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, now we know why Facebook was cut off for you. Now we know. <laughs> hey, I'm just, you know, you get haptic. You know that's going to be the biggest market boom. Oh, you ever. know that's going to come. You just know I it. Know. I am going to. And you know what industry is going to bring it to you first, right? <laughs> I'm going to say. I tell you what, if there's a company that does that, I am investing heavy money into it. It's going to make a lot of money, no matter what. Those pay per views that you're investing in don't count towards that trust. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one you referred to me? No, I don't. <laughs> but yeah, hey, something I, else that I've seen uses of, of this on tour guides are now doing this thing where you can buy a tour a guided tour, and basically what you're doing is you're reserving time with this tour guide. You're sitting in your home putting on your VR headset. They're going and walking around, uh, pick your favorite tourist attracts, whatever, and they've got a 360 camera on there, but then they're talking to you as, as they're doing it. And so you get mm -hmm. your guided tour without ever having to leave your house. Which, if Stuart so remembers- It's fine for some people, man, but it will never be mainstream, never be mainstream. No. No, but but, he, but from from perspective of for those who can't, yeah, I can't climb a mountain. Okay, I, I can't, I can't, I, I can't go down that special ladder that gets me to this one. To this one, what? What? <laughs> this one, what? You cut out. Yeah, uh, no, but it's it's uh, yeah, it's also the 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 physically disabled having you know like I say. You know, um, I, I, I have a daughter with uh, physical disabilities, so she'll never be able to do a great deal of the things that people take naturally for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can see the benefits of this for her would just be huge. It opens up a, a, a whole new world that would have been completely uh, unavailable to her. She can't ride a bike. You know, she'd never be able to ride a bike. She would never, ever be able to climb a mountain like rock climbing, she just, you know, she, she, it, it's not, well, I say that, you know, and, and, and people are amazing. You, where there's a will, there's always a way. Right. You, you'll always, you, the, the, with a lot of help and ingenuity, yes, we can probably do it. But this, this brings something to life. I can see the benefits of it from, from that point of view. I think it would be. And, and also too, you know, do people experience vacations or destinations differently because of their physical capabilities? Hmm. Honestly, I'm not going to be able to, do a lot of the things that it's somebody younger and in better physical condition can do yet i can maybe virtually experience them uh vicariously you know by by doing that and, and Stuart, you know that m months ago years ago i was touting about we're going to stick a 360 camera in a conference and people are going to watch sporting events and everything else that's actually been accelerated with covid and that's a part of the variations now that people are saying like stick a 360 camera in and you know, well, yes, uh, yes, you you we just a, yeah. just the camera in. We didn't say in what <laughs> <laughs> at a conference, at a conference with a camera 360 with degrees. A camera. What the frick is going on with my audio today? I don't think uh, it's your audio. I think it's the video as well. Everything is, is freezing. Yeah, for me. Just freeze. It's, I think it's, it's, it's your life, I think. Yeah, it's a whole uh, life, I think. I'm sorry. I, I look normal for what I'm doing, but apparently... Well, that's... I got a yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's mildly well, amusing, actually, so it's all yeah. right. <laughs> well, I, I should also put in context, normal for me, what's normal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there, there, there is no normal. There. No, <laughs> no, not really for it. But, um, yeah, but I think that there is maybe not a big segment, but I think a growing segment that this will eventually cater to. 
Mm. Especially right. as the technology is right. better. I agree. Okay. Yeah. You, you sold me there's, there's a, a market for it, but don't jump into this before you do your fundamentals. Right. Do, do all the oh, things. No, 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 no. This don't is a, this is in a DR strategy right now. It's not oh, what no. you need to do. Hey, what you playing with. It's called My Virtual Tours. And what's cool about it is it uses the platform I've always been telling you about, Google Street View, where you do your own 360s. Mm -hmm. And then you put it in and you can put your all your own hotspots as to what you want to say. It could be lead gen, call to action, menu. Uh, it's pretty cool. And you can make it go from room to room. So you could actually do a tour. Plus, you can do a live video window like Zoom in the corner and do what Tris says, that you can actually guide them through the process and show them what you want to show them virtually in 360 or in flat view. So I'm playing with that right now for uh, introducing people to the hotel and the location around it. So and again, you got, once you got your CRM squared away, you've got some great content for search. Your, your ads are running really well with profit margins. So do all that first. Add a search. Do what Lauren's saying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Before you play with the shiny objects. Sorry. <laughs> it's one of them things. It's almost like a one and done thing, isn't it? That, you know, because um, once you do that that type of video, you don't need to do it again. You know, Not unless you have a major refurb of the internet. Unless you're Lauren and you like to tinker. <laughs> unless you like to tinker, yeah. But, <laughs> you know, I, I can see how as as the future does rumble on. You know, I just look at my kids now. They don't watch television. They don't, you know, they don't watch, they don't watch satellite or cable. They watch YouTube. Mm -hmm. you know, that that is all they watch or occasionally i can drag my elders off to you know watch netflix and watch something. How old are they? 14 and 9 yeah, yeah. 14 years oh, sorry, 13, 13 sorry 13 and 9 so tick tiktok's the other one that my oh older. my goodness try to get my try to get my 13 year old daughter to have a conversation you sit there and all i can do is it, just arms moving yeah we've got all of it i'm like put your arms still Worst thing is tomorrow I um, I I I coach her soccer team, so I, I I will have thirty of them tomorrow as I'm trying to give instructions about what the, the next drill is going to be. All doing variations of the same TikTok at different points in the group. Oh. It's like trying to plat fog. It burns, it's tough, man. Cats. I feel you. Yeah, I, I coached my kids' soccer team right when for, uh, Fortnite broke out really big, and everyone was yeah. flossing. Remember the floss that yeah. everyone was doing? And I had a, it was a, I think I guess they were ten years old. Yeah, trying to get people to do drills when they're all trying to floss simultaneously is. <laughs> yeah, I, I had the floss as well. Yeah, that was that's that that was the whole. Yeah, yeah it's like oh for God's sake, it's just yeah. the football. <laughs> Honestly, hoteliers in digital marketing, you've got nothing compared to try to do this with, with like Little League. Hey, but Tris, I've got the perfect thing to stop them doing anything in their tracks that, that, that annoys you. So you know how they all used to say, and it's kind of died down a bit, but they always used to say, okay, boomer, right? That was their kind of, when dad did anything that was lame or old, they go, okay, boomer, right? We'll go to them, because now Generation Z, a lot of people are beginning to call them Zoomer. So you can just go to them when they do something TikTok-y or something that, that normal people don't do, only kids do. You just go, okay, Zuma. It infuriates them, but on belief, man. It stops <laughs> them in your track. So we're going to tell you. I don't think the boomer but, thing came over here. I don't. I, I did not. Oh, no, it was no, massive in the States, no, man. It, it didn't, well, that's, that's really annoying because then I'll just like look like the geriatric 43-year-old. He's like, what's he talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's even better, right? Because now you're doing it ironically. So you know, I find the uh, the coaching method method I developed was just to yell at them and make them run to the wall, which is like half a mile away and back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> by that point, they've gone. Good old fashioned time. Yeah, I, I do. I do want to point out something that we 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 definitely highlight the fact that hospitality has suffered. We in some ways we think the worst out of all what's happened with COVID because of the numbers of people employed by hospitality and the loss and, and, the, and the hotels closing and so forth. But I'd like to bring out something that friends of mine in the inter... <laughs> Lauren! What? <laughs> friends of friends mine? In the entertainment industry. Okay. Oh, cool. We're back on that yeah. subject, are we? Yes. They've suffered in some ways worse than we have. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. we're at least we're trying to struggle to do business in some capacity. A lot of them are simply out. Yeah. 
Broadway is closed until potentially June next year. Yeah. Cirque du Soleil is bankrupt and closed. To cover for what I say. Are gone. What's people gone? that book these people are gone, huh? What was gone? We missed the, the first gone. Oh, the small, the small, the small venues, the yeah. small events, the musicians that, that travel around and go to events and so forth. They they don't have any business. Um, orchestras, philharmonics, mm -hmm. that don't have anything to do. They're they're, they're shut down. We've got you know they're not doing any you know performances. We've got the same over so. here. Uh, I've got a close friend uh, of mine. She's she's run her own business for eleven years. Uh, built up a very very successful events business in the UK. Gone. Talking to her today, she's down to one percent of her turnover compared to like this time last year. Mm. And she's she's moving into her off season now. She's missed her entire season in the summertime. Because obviously in the UK, whether you know it's very much outdoors, team building, and uh, she does a lot of mindfulness and well uh, well being things for team um, team culture, all of that, yeah, just totally gone. It's devastated. You know, we're actually we're working with her to try and see how we can help her, you know, move it potentially from what it once was and bring it more virtual. But again, it's the the point that you're making, Stuart. You know, how do you do a team building activity? virtually when normally you'd be on a lake and kayaking or canoeing or building a raft or whatever it would be. It's, it's, it's just not quite the same. The yes, there's plenty of things you can still do that are team building exercises. They're just not the same as they once were. And it's trying to get people to invest in that, especially now when everybody's kind of working from home, you've got all of the uh, mental health, you know, wellness issues that potentially come with that, trying to get companies to invest in, uh, you know, uh, invest in their people still during the during this period of time, and that the, their their well being is going to be your well being in, in in the long term. The same goes with hotels. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's the same making sure that you are looking after the staff. And some hotels are doing it really really well. Others are just yeah, they're just completely missing the mark. Yeah. So we're yeah, seeing that. We're, we're definitely seeing that. It's yeah. tough times. Tough times. Yeah. And as we pointed out earlier, there's a lot of hotels that are just going to change as dean said they're just the names are changing ownership's changing yeah, yeah. Uh, we we've seen it with marriott they've lost i mean hotels what 102 hotels last week that 35 poof you know <laughs> you got out again on yeah uh, uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna hotels last week that we understand you that <laughs> Change brand. They lost. They're no longer Marriott. From twenty, you know, the twenty thirty five contracts are gone. Poof, they're not brand anymore. You know, they're just building. Yeah. Well, with that, since I keep cutting out, is we're close to the two hour mark. <laughs> we can try to turn it off and on again because that usually fixes it. Yeah. Well, I'm, we're about to the point now where it's like, yeah, okay, all right. Um, sorry for the cutting in and out. Uh, I'll we could probably play a game. We could just make up what you said in between. <laughs> I'll just gap it. Yeah, uh, the trans the transcripts are going to be interesting. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren says <say> something. <laughs> the other three laugh. <laughs> it happened again. <laughs> but with that said, I guess Mr. Stewart. Yes, sir. Your podcast, but your your new podcast is rolling out today. If people want to hear your phenomenal award-winning podcast where is it that they can go yeah fueltravel.com slash podcast so we, we we're doing an episode this week we already recorded it yesterday because folks are out today in, including pete who may or may not have covid we're, we're unsure he's getting tested today um but we're doing we're doing it on cyber monday so if you're if you're planning for cyber monday campaigns this this year then it's a good episode just a refresher for the things you need to make sure you include when you're doing your Cyber Monday deals this, this year. And then don't forget, too, that we're going to be exhibiting at High Tech. We're going to be showing off our super mobile-friendly booking engine, which is, is kicks the ass of all the other guys. I can say that now, Tris, because yours was pretty good until it got bought, and now it's meh. Um, but our booking engine will, will increase your conversion rate. Our mobile app for contactless check-in, which isn't a brand new app. It's been around for about four years. So we've got a lot of data that shows you how to use it properly in the massively awesome CRM, which is AI powered and super cool. We'll be showing all those at high tech. And if you want a free ticket to high tech this year, go to fueltravel.com slash high tech. If you're a hotelier, you can get into high tech for free. No cost to you. You don't even have to come to my booth. 
I don't care. But next time I see you in real life, buy me a beer and we'll call it quits. Okay. <laughs> fueltravel.com slash high tech or fueltravel.com slash podcast. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Tris, three and six as you take over the world from the small island in the Atlantic. <laughs> yes, indeed. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, if you want to get in contact with me, it's tris.hayward at three and six dot agency. That's all words, no numbers at all. Or you can hit me up on uh, LinkedIn, uh, tristan.hayward. Hayward is H-E-A-W-R-D. We do all things digital marketing um, uh, for uh, for hotels. And, Wait, just uh, you know. Ben, ben has a slogan. Say that again, sorry, Lauren, you broke. Ben has a slogan for you guys, digital marketing without the... Uh, yeah, d digital without dishonesty. That is that is our our slogan. Um, yes, uh, quite, enjoying, quite enjoying that I'm, at the moment. I'm beginning to think you and Ben are Superman and Clark Kent, just, you know, or Michael Jackson and Janet. Yeah, I that, yeah. I, I mean, if that if that was the case, he's definitely Janet. Um, that's <laughs> not the wardrobe list malfunction, though. <laughs> well, you never know with him. You never know. <laughs> For God's sake, don't let him stand up on. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Okay. Wait, you're the one that got blocked from Facebook, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. it was for those images. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dean, I am back, I'm back on Facebook, by the way. Just, yeah. I, 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 you know, I wrote a strongly worded letter to Mark Zuckerberg, and, and he, he's, oh, it's Trist, didn't realize. Yeah, sorry, man. I like that. <laughs> uh, Dean, other than being Dean from Boy Scout Troop number, hold on. 122. 122. Buy popcorn. See the link Bye. in the show notes. Popcorn. Um, uh, other than that, what is your alter egos? Uh, what are the companies that you are alter ego controlling? Yeah. So for my day job, I, I do all things meta search, actually. So we've got Basecamp Meta, Finding Your Way. That's all about the educational process. So digital agencies that have been tasked with doing meta search and they're not quite sure what they're doing with that. Uh, go to basecampmeta.com. We can help you bring yourself to, up to speed. And then metasearchmarketing.com, where we're working with those little guys uh, that are trying to figure out, hey, how can I do meta? Uh, yes, we can get you connected. Yes, we can run a campaign in there. Uh, we've got some very plug and play ways of doing that. Even if you're not going to believe this, even if you don't have your own website, I can get you into Google Meta. How about that? And by the way, if you don't have your own website, we should have you over here talking to Stuart uh, or, or Tris and those guys and, and getting one. But that's another story. So. Uh, any PMS system, we've got ways of working around it and getting you live on Google Meta. And as we were talking earlier, it's really cheap right now. So great time to do it. He's like the Wizard of Oz for Meta. <laughs> <laughs> There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. No, we have evil wicked wit. <laughs> this uh, episode, you, there we go. Our previous 270 episodes of the Hospitality Marketing Live Show. You can go to hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash live. Look for show number 271 for those show notes. And of course, the podcast at hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash live. And as a precursor announcement, if you're interested in joining the hospitalitymarketing.club that's rolling out, uh, you can go to that website as well and get signed up preliminary for our launch coming up soon. Oh, I, so, want to be, I want to be part of that club. You're already part of it. You're already, yeah, I already, I already, I already volunteered told you. Yeah. You're <laughs> <in there. laughs> Indeed. But how yeah. would we get in touch with you personally, Lauren? How, how can I possibly do that? Oh, uh, well, don't go on Instagram or um, uh, TikTok because if you look for Lauren Gray, there is a much more attractive female singer that has millions of followers. Uh, that's Ooh. not me. <laughs> is, is that why you haven't been contacting me back? I've been getting in touch with her. Yeah, I, 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 I get, I get hate mail from uh, her loyal following that I should be surrendering both of my Twitter handle at Lauren Gray and anything else related to the name Lauren Gray should be hers because she has millions of followers. She's, I think, she's up to forty million at this point. Some wow. staggering, stupid amount. Say, I was born before. You know, I registered Twitter, my Twitter handle before she was born. I did actually. I did. I, I registered Twitter before she was born. I've got t-shirts older than you, love. T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one item on my clothing that's probably older. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyways, yes. But you can find me on LinkedIn, obviously, as well as uh, Lauren Gray. Anything. I actually was early adopter for most stuff. Go figure. So my name's floating around as as Lauren Gray. So, anyways. 
gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, Griffin, thank you for joining us. For if you listen back to the notes later to this point. Uh, <laughs> That's the way to end the show. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk to you all later. Uh Tristan, get up with you, yes? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, Bye. Bye.